welcome. Uh, Pranoy Roy is, uh, of course, here uh, with us. Uh, Dorab Sopariwala is uh, also uh, going to be here, and we're going to get a wide a variety of voices uh, very, very shortly. So, Pranoy, uh, 11 on 10? <laughs> Well, we'll find out soon because a lot of people will be watching this much more closely than we are. Right. I think the first thing we should look at actually is which stocks prices have gone up and which have gone down because they follow it closer than all of us put together. But it is a, a, a budget packed with uh, information and ideas. Of course, the worry is like it always has been. Uh, implementation. You can have grand schemes, but if they're not implemented, for example, privatization. By the way, she used the word privatization for the first time. Yes, uh, she not also disinvestment. She used a lot of, uh, yeah. mo most of the time used disinvestment, but used the word privatization. Uh, no government has used it so far. But the, the record has been appalling in terms of implementation. Look at Air India. I mean, it's gone on for years, and the, the tragedy is that the stock market is booming. This is the time for, this was the time for disinvestment. So, you know, and then you raise funds for helping the poor and, and uh, boosting the economy and infrastructure. But if you don't do, you don't implement privatization. So let's hope that changes this year, because it's quite a huge target, I think, 1.7 lakh crores or something like that. Uh, I'll get the figure. I've got the figures here, but just off the top of my head. Yes. But look at the uh, stock market is really pleased with what's happening. It's up three percent. So obviously they like it. Uh, we've got a lot of industrialists actually, and they really understand all this in depth. And we've got uh, Mukesh Bhutani and Sachit Jolly, who are tax experts, who will explain to us whether the tax is becoming more complicated or less complicated. Every finance minister says, I'm going to make it much more simple. And then you, it turns out it's much more complicated. Uh, and um, you feel that uh, Nirmala Sitaraman generally has a heart in the right place, but you also get the feeling that she feels, oh God, I'm in the wrong place at the wrong time. <laughs> So let's see. It's a tough time with the COVID. So uh, yes, let's go across to uh, all the experts who will see whether implementation is important. Uh, uh, Dorab, one point or a couple of points that strike you from the budget. I know you haven't had time to really read the documents in depth. Uh, that we'll do this evening will be full of information. And this will be partly full of information. A couple of things. Firstly, you know, these huge numbers in social schemes, they're all over five years, three years. We need to see how much is year by year. Then there is, as you said, disinvestment. Only 20,000 crore for a bank, for a public sector bank recapitalization. The RBI is saying the NPS will double, and yet only 20,000 crore. And one good point, very good point. Two points actually. People are delighted. There is no change in the tax structure, and you know also now that most people like us, we will not have to in a way fill our income tax forms. They will come filled to us, pre-filled to us, so we don't have to worry about making mistakes or whatever. Those of us who do it honestly, they will fill them for us and send them to us. I think that is something that countries like Singapore have been doing for donkey's year. It's no big deal. It's lovely that. The government's picking up all the data and sending it to you. So I think that's very good for individuals. Okay. Interesting. Right, right. Of course, implementation is key. Yeah. Well, they've done partly. It started. I mean, you you already get your dividends or whatever taxes are already being shown. Take a bit of time. I think it's not rocket science that we know. But I, 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 I totally agree with you. I totally agree with you that she would say, we're going to spend 50,000 crores over five years. You know, that was all, everything was, in, instead of saying how much this year and how much, you know, it was like amount and then uh, sort of watch five years. You know, that, that 
But she delivers it well, I must say, and, and, there was and this very big clear. Then there was this big agricultural subsidies on three or four crops. They total around three lakh crore. But the question is, the GDP is three thousand three lakh crore. The GDP is three lakh crore. Fifteen percent is agriculture. So forty-five thousand crore is the value of agriculture in this country. And you're saying three lakh crore the subsidy sounds great, but then you compare it to the value of the entire agricultural budget. Oh, it's good. Increase are very good, but you know it's not. It's not like three lakh crore out of five lakh crore. It's three lakh crore to forty-five lakh crore. Right. Vasu. Yes. Vasu, one thing you would have noticed. Budget for elections. Yes. Every state that's going to an election has got a special. I mean, that is not really on in budgets. Of course, maybe the time lag is enough to be technically correct. Yes. But actually, I like to look at it in a positive way. That is why we need elections, and not simultaneous elections every five years. Because the only time a state gets anything is when they have an election. Democracy pushes politicians, not the other way around. No, that's so, true. It's interesting. A sort of partially election budget. Yeah, you know. Yeah, there that. was there there was that. You're absolutely right. There was very clearly that election uh, signaling, especially when it came to road expansion. So mm -hmm. she was talking about how 3,500 kilometers in Tamil Nadu, one lakh crore. Tamil Nadu, of course, going to elections. Also, 65,000 crores to Kerala, 25,000 crores to West Bengal. All three electoral bound states. Also, through in Assam, not to forget 19,000 crores. She said. So there was that signalling, and then also, as uh, Dorab mentioned, the very pointed reference to the fact that the government has enhanced procurement from farmers is paying them a higher minimum support price. This has really got nothing to do with the budget per se. This is ongoing, but she spent a considerable amount of time on that, obviously because of the ongoing farm protests. So, in that sense, as with every budget, uh, this one too had its fair share of uh, political signalling. There's one very small yes. but very positive item, which is. Three thousand seven hundred odd crores for a digital census. You know, we still don't have the caste data from the two thousand ten census. America does a census in October or November. By Jan, Feb, the figures are out. We can't be waiting for five every year. I mean, There's nothing new. We waited for years to get our census data. If it's digital, if it's done this year, it's three thousand seven hundred and eight crores what they provide for. I think it's fantastic. Our census should be digital. Data should be available. It's so much, so useful for planning. If right. you have the data quickly, not seven eight years later, you should have data on the spot. I think it's a terrific move. Absolutely fantastic move. One other thing, Pranoy and Dorab, if I may ask, which was interesting was what you made of the fiscal deficit numbers because there's been talk, there's been concern, particularly about whether the government is being completely honest uh, with all its financial numbers. But here she just came out and said it. That fiscal deficit for 2021 is going to be somewhere in the nine percent range. It's a huge number, and it's going to be six percent for the coming year. Right. Actually, uh, that was expected about nine percent, but I would say a lot of people would say that was too little, and even six percent is too little at a time like this. You should forget about budget deficit. The world mm -hmm. understands. The main thing is. Despite all that, and she said we had uh, COVID stimulus was 13% of GDP, which sounds good, but a lot of that was liquidity and credit, and not direct fiscal and ex uh, government expenditure. And the bottom line is, we did something wrong because we dropped by we are dropping by 8%, 7.7% in GDP this year. Mm. So whatever you say. With that 7.7 is almost three times the average for all emerging markets. So what did we do wrong? We needed that kind of analysis. See, total package is 13 percent of GDP, and yet we dropped by 7.7 percent in our GDP. Why? Mm. If we analyze that, we can correct it for next year. But I'm not seeing that in the economic survey of here. Any self Critical, any introspection to help us understand how to improve for the next year. Okay. Uh, these are documents where you need you need to understand what we did, what we didn't do, and what we need to do to stop another 
seven or eight percent drop. And right. you know, even the increase in months, it's good that our increase is projected at eleven percent, which is almost double emerging markets. We have to see whether that happens. But even that, even with that eleven percent, because we've dropped by seven percent. Plus 7.7% down, 11% up means over the two years, we'll be up by only 2.5%. Mm. Over two years. And that's just too slow. The rest of the world is double that in GDP growth. Correct. So we need to understand and say, that's what we did slightly wrong. Our intentions were right, but maybe liquidity didn't work as well as government expenditure. And we are going to correct it in this way. Okay. You know, just a bit of analysis. Yeah. Right, Sorry. right. Okay, let's, let's also open it up. Uh, Pranoy and Dorab, uh, we've got uh, Sumit Singhania uh, with us, who's partner Deloitte. We have such a jolly tax expert uh, also with us. Uh, Sumit Singhania, let me just start with you. Uh, let's just take a, a step back and just give us your sense of whether this budget has managed to achieve some of those big picture expectations because you had to deal with the pandemic slowdown, you had to deal with job uh, creation and uh, stimulating demand. Given the fact that you don't have enough revenue, was she able to pull off this balancing act in your view? Sure, so I would, I would actually start by saying that uh, to me, it, it was a, definitely a great balancing act by the finance minister. And if you just step back and look at the economic survey uh, that we had on Friday, uh, the numbers were not looking very, very good when you look at the fiscal deficit and stuff, right? So, uh, in the current circumstances that we are, uh, uh, what what basically the government has done, they have essentially laid out the, the whole roadmap and the vision for the infrastructure development, right? Not only for a year or two years, probably for the entire decade. And that, to me, is a huge uh, accomplishment of the finance minister in this budget. The other uh, takeaway, if I say from a tax perspective, for me, is that uh, there is no COVID surcharge or cess, and that was sort of a... Uh, apprehension that was lurking somewhere. Uh, uh, it's a huge relief uh, for many sections of taxpayer and, and overall a statement to the investor community that, look, we are not going to go for a, a short-term measure like a CES or surcharge. Let's look at some something like uh, you know long-term vision, uh, which is the infrastructure development. Uh, let's look at long-term vision like uh, uh, promoting the manufacturing industry and so on and so forth. So to that, from that perspective, I'm quite pleased right. with the budget overall. Uh, and if you ask me to rate the budget, uh, maybe premature, but I would actually put it uh, more than seven, probably eight over ten uh, in, in terms of the proposal and the quality of proposals. Right, Vasu, can I just bring in uh, Sachit Jolly here? Yes, because, please. Because I mean, he I feel is one of the most brilliant uh, tax minds that uh, we've come across, even on previous uh, budget programs, and you know, reading his stuff during the year. Sachit, in a nutshell, what does this mean for? Uh, taxation in India more complicated, less complicated, implementation is key, or, or is, it, is, is it a major revolution or not much change? Well, yes, they seem to be revolutionized, uh, rev you know, bringing in a revolution in that sense by talking about something called a faceless tax tribunal. I don't know how that will work. We've, uh, even today, you can't expect the courts to be faceless, to be honest. I mean, I don't think that will work. You can't be arguing before a, you know, a faceless person. I mean, you, it just doesn't work. They will introduce that at the commissioner level. Uh, it hasn't worked till now. It's it at the early stages. You have already seen writ petitions filed in the high court challenging that. I don't see how I can argue before a faceless court. I mean, it is just unbelievable. Uh, the second, uh, you know, I, I thought one good announcement in the from the direct tax perspective was reducing the time limit for reopening cases. As of now, it is six years extending up to 16 years. They are proposing it to bring it down to three years with a maximum of 10 years. I think that's a great announcement. I, I mean, it will bring down a lot of litigation, uh, hopefully, uh, because this is one of the most litigated areas. And even the timing, you can't have taxpayers hold, held up for ransom for, you know, six years uh, just for the tax department to wake up and, you know, initiate reassessment proceedings. Uh, there's one more which, which, which I thought uh, interesting, interesting uh, proposal was giving exemption to airline leasing companies in India to encourage leasing, uh, aircraft leasing. That's a positive development, according to me. Hopefully, the uh, tax department is also sensitized 
on what is leasing because you know today almost every airline lessor from ireland is facing tax disputes just because the tax department and the officials don't understand how leasing is done so i hope while in implementing this exemption from aircraft leasing in india the officers are also sensitized on how aircraft leasing actually works because otherwise it's going to end up in a soup uh, you'll have another set of litigation on that good point good right. points good points yeah let's crucial point if we can get uh, pranoy also vipin sondhi joining us uh, chairman cii trade fairs council and cii national committee on r&d and innovation uh, mr sondhi just again uh, not getting too granular at this stage just your overall take on the budget has it done enough to try and put india back on track srinivas uh, thank you i would think so i think it's well thought out uh, through the six pillars as uh, as been articulated before uh, the key is in the implementation of this in all the six pillars but i think the six pillars are well thought out it is a budget for growth uh, public investment being there which will generate demand will bring in private investment as demand picks up to about 75 80% of capacity utilization mm. then that goes on for jobs consumption and savings but i think uh, well thought out overall uh, uh, also see and again it's on implementation disinvestment asset monetization and i think creation of a dfi i think there's been a lot of uh, conversation in the past for the creation of a dfi which uh, should be good for infrastructure dfi if you just want to i think vasu yes go ahead pranay yes yes i think if you could ask everybody could uh, among their positives if they could add one negative that they feel yes uh right yeah let's that's not a bad idea we can take that around well, the I, table yes would you like to start uh, such a jolly what what is a, a negative that you came across Well, for me, uh, this faceless uh, tax tribunal is a big negative. I don't see how that will work. But I just wanted uh, to point out one thing: non-tax, which I really liked in the budget, uh, was you know the recognition for controlling pollution in urban areas. The 2,000 odd crores set out for that. I think finally somebody has woken up to address a real problem of uh, healthy living. Okay, Mr. Singhania, if you were to identify yes, one so negative. Sure. So I would say uh, less than negative. Uh, actually, a disappointment that I didn't see any any enhanced uh, uh, number of uh, budgetary allocation for defence sector. I was hoping for something big to happen there, given the geopolitical circumstances the country finds itself in. Uh, maybe some something is sitting there in fine print, but I didn't see any 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 mention in the budget speech at least. And the other other uh, rather disappointment for me, unless it it sits as part of the uh, fine print again, is. Uh, some sort of uh, 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 you know trying to increase the 15% tax rate bracket for uh, hopefully to include also the service sector because uh, we need to be uh, we need to be mindful that india is a country uh, while we are uh, we are fairly competitive now over last 12 months in terms of tax rate we need to do a little bit more uh, only manufacturing uh, having a 15% if you can just supplement some right. strategic sector like let's say mro and some of the other services sector maybe put some innovation in the and in, in the research and development activity also under the 15% tax rate right. that would do a lot of good so i guess i guess that's that's one thing i would personally expecting uh, okay. but uh, i'll actually wait to see something in the fine print more right pranoy uh, kiran mazundar show also with us do you want to do, do, do you want to we always get the best comments from kiran mazundar show <laughs> always the best and it's been going on for years So well, that's very kind of you, Pranay. But uh, let me just, let me just say that um, well, I think this budget has basically uh, come out as a budget which is not surprising anyone in the sense that everyone expected to hear some negative tax uh, news on um, wealth tax and other taxation, and that has an assess on COVID, which didn't happen. So it's that has I think buoyed up the sentiments. I think the government has done well in terms of allocating budgetary spends on infrastructure. Of course, research and innovation. I think they've they've, they've announced a fifty thousand crore allocation over ten years on on research and innovation in public research institutions. 
I would have liked to have seen some research incentives for the private sector, but at the moment, I think the government is really focusing on strengthening the public ecosystem, whether it is infrastructure, whether it is um, R&D, or any of the kind of uh, uh, education or whatever, what have you. And that's a good thing. Um, I think what is important is to make a note on the uh, intent of the government to privatize uh, the banking sector, the insurance sector is going to benefit from the raising of the uh, investment levels for foreign direct investment from, well, 49 to 74. So I think all of that has sort of been well received by the markets. But as I had said, uh, everything is about e execution, implementation, and reading the fine print. So I think by and large, people are um, happy that the budget hasn't introduced any surprises. It is kind I mean, like everyone said, we need uh, predictability and consistency of financial policies, which is what this budget seems to have indicated. And of course, there have been various uh, sectors who have benefited from certain taxation uh, policies. So overall, I think it's a very, you know, I would say good budget and it has buoyed up sentiments. Um, personally, I would have liked to have seen research incentives for the private sector, but then I'm glad at least they've uh, increased the investment in the public sector research ecosystem. Right. Uh, Kiran Marzumda, <laughs> sure. can I just ask you on that? Just one small thing. Does this, this government philosophy does not seem to be private sector. It's more uh, of the old Congress socialist type of, you know, they don't really, are not totally focused on uh, privatization. They're raising tariffs for protection. That was even uh, mentioned again today. So are you surprised that they haven't given incentives for private sector? I don't think it's their ideology. Their ideology is similar to the old Congress uh, socialist ideology. I think they need to also support private sector in a big way. And I believe that, uh, of yeah. course, uh, one of the areas you have to give them credit is that they are talking about privatizing the uh, banking sector. They are talking about de you know, monetizing from disinvestment of various sectors. They're even talking about disinvesting uh, land. So I think from that point of view, they're actually hoping that the private sector will play a role in helping them monetize. So to that effect, I would say they, they have looked at private sector. But I think they basically have taken a view that private sector doesn't need help, they can help themselves. Uh, and I think that's the kind of view I have uh, noted over my various deliberations. Saying that, hey guys, you, you, are, you are strong enough to stand on your own. I don't think you should ask for any more rollouts or, or support. And it's the public sector that really needs all the support because it's been ignored and it's not doing well. I think that's the kind of, you're right. I mean, I think private sector will have to learn to fend for itself. Okay. okay. Uh, uh, let's just go across uh, quickly also to Mukesh Bhutani, uh, founder of BMR Legal, who's uh, with us. Uh, Mukesh Bhutani, uh, your quick thoughts on the budget, uh, especially when it comes to this question of, because there's been no real change in the tax labs, in terms of then, where is the revenue going to come from uh, in order to do all this spending, infrastructure and other spending that the government has set itself out? Well, two things. I think, uh, uh, you know, they, instead of laying down a, uh, you know, year-to-year -year plan, they are targeting a fiscal deficit of 4.5% over a five-year period. Now, that seems aggressive on the face of it until and unless there are deep tax administrative reforms which will make sure that economies of scale are gained by way of higher tax collection. I think also the focus seems to be largely on avoiding disputes from two points of view. Number one, uh, disputes has not necessarily given us a good name and our overall competitiveness from the point of view of ease of doing business has got impacted. Secondly, settlement of disputes, whether it was the 2019 budget for service tax and excise duty, or it was the 2020 budget, the Vish with Vivatse Vishwa scheme, which has been extended mm -hmm. by another month. The overall objective seems to be clean up the past, also mobilize tax collections uh, through that manner. I think the biggest 
positive in budget was the rumors that were floating around about new taxes, whether by way of uh, inheritance tax or wealth tax or changing the overall tax rate that has not happened. Instead, I feel that a lot more pragmatic measures have been introduced by way of uh, simplification. Uh, so the overall you know, threshold for reopening of the assessment, which has been a major cause of dispute, has been significantly relaxed. In addition, dividend payouts by REITs and INVITs have been exempted from withholding tax. There is further relaxation to the sovereign wealth fund and pension fund investing in specified infrastructure. There is also Mukesh, a proposal to Mukesh, notify infrastructure you there. debt funds. Yes. Mukesh, you know, you talk about uh, fewer number of uh, uh, lit tax litigations, etc. But, you know, we've seen a trend over time and it's just getting worse and worse, which I'm not just saying this government, even the previous government. Tax litigation is reserved for their political opponents. How to stop that? There may be fewer, well, but they'll be tar more targeted. So, you know, do you agree Correct. with that? That so, has been a trend over the last 10 years. Yeah, so I think I think the overall philosophy in addressing dispute resolution is really, uh, you know, twofold. Number one, reduce the number of smaller cases. So if you look at the uh, statute of limitation, they are saying that we are going to reduce it to three years unless the income evasion is above 50 lakh rupees, which means that majority of the taxpayers against whom reopening was done would be avoided. The second is that this will also channelize the machinery of the revenue department to look at only those fewer cases and do a thorough job and also in the overall process improve their chances of winning in the higher appellate forum. So I think the number of disputes right. will go down, the number of cases will go down, perhaps the quantums may not go down. So the high profile litigation on contentious issues will continue. I don't think that there is any measure to be able to avoid it. Having said that, if they streamline the administrative mechanism, then it could achieve. I think Sachit correctly pointed out that we have still to see how the faceless commissioner appeals schemes work, because that is really the first appellate forum. Now, they have gone ahead and announced a faceless income tax appellate tribunal, which is the second Right. Uh, you know, right. stage of litigation, we still need but to Mukesh, see how Mukesh, that is my going to point succeed. was faceless. If it's faceless, will it be bias, biasless? Anyway, we won't go into that. The point is reduction in number, but is the direction going to be fair? And, and again, I'm not just blaming this government. Maybe it's intensified. But right. Basu, over to you. Okay. Yes, no. Uh, fair point. Uh, Vikram Kirloskar is... Uh, with us, uh, Vice Chairman Toyota Kirloskar Motor, past uh, President CII, Dr. Noshad Forbes also with us. Uh, he's Forbes Marshal, of course, and he's also on the CII Economic Affairs Council. Let me start with you, uh, Mr. Kirloskar. Thank you uh, for uh, joining us. Uh, just very quickly, what, what jumped out at you uh, from this budget? You know, I, we've been talking with the government over the last 10, 12 months, right, through the start of COVID and having very regular meetings. One thing that jumped out to me was that uh, finance minister has been listening to all of us. That's the first thing I felt, uh, because there are a lot of things that were brought in was based on, on, on the talks and the discussions and the data that we submitted over the last uh, 10, 12 months. Mm -hmm. I feel slightly motivated also. I feel actually well motivated in this budget because there is spending. Uh, they, they have said that the budget deficit will go on for some time. They've given some time frame to bring it to reasonable levels. I think that is that is good. We require that. Uh, I, you know, scrappage policy, there's a, there's finally, it's a, it's something has come in the budget. Now we'll get into the details. Also, there seems to be some amount of uh, flattening of custom duties in trying to equalize everything. I think these are good. And there was a lot of talk of uh, new taxes and nothing of that has happened. And for that, I'm, I'm, I'm truly relieved and uh, motivated. I, I feel with the uh, uh, there is a certain amount of continuity in this budget because of no change in taxes, and that's uh, I think continued. I mean, I mean, continuity in policy and uh, predictability of policy is what will increase investment. Uh, I, I I have high hopes for that now. 
Okay. Uh, you know, right. I just... No, sorry, uh, I just have to ask yes. you. I just have to make one comment on that, Vasu. Please, please. Vikram Kiloskar said they've been listening to him and others. So, we can blame you for everything then. Okay, thank you. Yeah, you That's can blame us. Kiloskar. <laughs> <laughs> it's all <laughs> your fault. <laughs> Okay. We know who to call, who to blame next time. <laughs> no, I think they're listening to the industry. I don't mean it's me all personally. Your fault. I mean we, we've been we've been uh, this, uh, a lot no, of I'm the industry kidding, yeah. has, been, has been discussing. It seems right. there's a lot of listening which has happened to to various sectors of industry and various sectors of public and society at large. Right. Uh, Kiran Shaw has a hand up. We'll come to you in a second. I, I'm told I have to go across to Anshuman Magazine as well. He's been sitting in patiently and uh, he needs to uh, go. So, Mr. Magazine. Thank you, uh, Again, Magazine. just Thank you. What, were, what were to you the highlights, uh, Mr. Magazine? If you could identify one or two big highlights and also what was a, a disappointment, if, if any. Sure. I think the highlight was really uh, monetization of surplus government land. This has been a discussion happening for quite some time. And if that is implemented, as you know, besides PSUs, the railways, the defense are sitting on huge amount of land. If there is monetization uh, implemented uh, timely, it can release huge amount of land and, 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 and uh, liquidity. The second was, of course, um, that the foreign portfolio investors uh, can now, I mean, uh, the REITs can raise debt from foreign portfolio investors, which will be good. Again, it brings liquidity. Uh, REIT market is going to develop fairly rapidly in India and will provide quite a liquidity. So that was a good step. Um, and, and the whole uh, discussion on investment infrastructure, of course, is huge, be it metro, airports, etc. Uh, so overall, I think this budget was really good. But personally speaking, I was expecting more, especially when I heard that this was supposed to be the best uh, budget in 100 years. Uh, so if I look at from that point of view, uh, expectations were more. Um, mm -hmm. And uh, if, if you look at the incentives, the tax incentives, even for housing, uh, there's an extension uh, on exemption of one and a half lakh rupees. Uh, I was personally expecting much more. So good budget, but in, in the background no, Mr. of Mr. best Magazine. budget in 100 years, uh, I would say yeah. uh, I expectations were not say met. You know. Best budget in a Mr. Magazine, I was just going to thank very much. Very interesting. I was just going to say, saying the best budget in 100 years is not saying much. <laughs> Standard, you know. I remember, <laughs> I remember they used to say about uh, the World This Week program, it's the best thing on Doordarshan. <laughs> but, you know, I mean, the, st the standard on Doordarshan at that time. It's a, so it's a qualified... <laughs> maybe it is the best. <laughs> not setting a high bar. Okay, uh, let's also get in Noshad Forbes. Don't set a high bar. <laughs> Noshad Forbes, uh, best budget in 100, 200 years. Uh, what, does this, I mean, has it done enough or is it just a series of more incremental steps? So, so you know, I, I, I feel, you know, the, the finance minister started by saying that we were, she was presenting this budget at, at really unprecedented times. But I think the budget that we got was a business as usual budget. Uh, for more normal economic times. Uh, now, as, as Vikram mentioned as well, uh, I think there's positives there, which is that it's good to have consistency, good to have no significant changes in taxes. Uh, all of that is, I think, uh, that, that says that there's a degree of stability in policy making, which I think is very positive. Mm. Uh, I have some concerns uh, in two areas, uh, concerns in... Uh, for in implementation, uh, you know, we heard this. We heard this commitment to have uh, privatization proceeds uh, of 1.76 lakh crores next year, um, with no indication of what is going to change such that we can achieve it, because we had a similar target for the current year and haven't come anywhere near it. Mm. And in case we think that's because of COVID, we had a high target last year and didn't come anywhere near it. So what are we actually going to change to deliver on our privatization targets and disinvestment target uh, next year? Now, a healthy thing is that the finance minister used the word privatization. Uh, that, I think, instead of disinvestment, uh, I think using the word privatization is very healthy. In the same way, uh, she referred again to an old uh, principle of the government, which was minimum government, maximum governance. We haven't heard that in the last few years. It's good to hear it again. And now I hope we will see a series of policies actually deliver on that promise because we've not seen it so far. 
The other thing that I would have a concern over is on tariffs. Uh, we continue to see hear lots of fiddling with tariffs. You know, uh, you know the uh, tariff on one solar product goes up from five uh, percent to fifteen percent. On another solar product, from five to twenty percent. Mm. Um, you know, on mm. cotton, from zero to ten percent. I mean, uh, I I worry about that because uh, you know, yes, we are promised a more rational tariff structure. Uh, but the examples that were that the finance minister mentioned did not, it seems to me, be con that wasn't consistent with this more rational tariff structure. Right. Yes. Uh, I think that's a very good point. Yes. I just wanted to bring in a fact there, uh, Dora, which will emphasize exactly uh, what he's saying. And that is in 2018, 17 18, the government raised tariffs. 2,500 times. This is data provided by Arvind Subramaniam, the former, uh, who's now at Harvard and uh, Ashoka University. Uh, 2,500 times in one year. You know, that's never done. So I totally agree that that is a big worry area, and goodness knows whether that will change. link to that. You know, look at the tariff on cotton. We are now among the top two producers of cotton in the world. How much cotton are we going to import? that you got started solar, you want to go solar, you want to go green, you want to go clean. Okay, the Chinese are supplying it. That's probably the reason, but you know, we want cheap electricity. Either you set up a huge unit, allow, give them some concessions, set up a huge unit to produce solar units cheaply. Otherwise, you know, when you pay tariffs, who pays yeah. the price? We pay the price as consumers of that electricity. Yeah. yeah. No, Just more you. than that, actually, Kiran Mazumda show yeah. that when you raise import tariffs, other countries respond by raising their tariffs. So your export, uh, exports have plummeted, you know, from 15% down to 3%. Uh, imports are plummeting. So a lot of exporters do import stuff that they export. So increasing tariffs, as Dorab says, affects consumers, but also affects, uh, affects our exports. Well, I think Pranay, this was also something that, you know, the Trump regime tried to do and it actually backfired. So we should be a bit cautious about the way we go about raising tariffs. Uh, one more thing I just wanted to mention was that there was one good highlight in this budget for me, and that was the very sharp increase in healthcare spends, uh, you know, by 137% for this fiscal to 223,000 crores, and uh, I guess 35,000 crores of this is only related to COVID vaccines. So I think that was a good, uh, you know, uh, allocation of funds for healthcare, which has really been starved all these years. So I think that was a positive. Secondly, I think uh, the whole focus on infrastructure is, of course, something which is welcome. But as everyone has said on this panel, it's really about how expeditiously we really invest and create the infrastructure and uh, how we prioritize uh, on, on all the various uh, fronts that have been mentioned. So that really is the main thing, but otherwise it's a decent budget because you know people just get relieved because there's some continuity and stability and there are no big surprises. But as many said, uh, I think we do need to focus on this year as a year of V-shaped recovery and there, I think we should have actually supported industry with more uh, fiscal incentives. But just one... Uh, so, uh, so, Kiran yes. Mazumda, Shaw, sorry, best in 100 years, best in 20 years, best in 10 years, or best <laughs> in 5 years? Pranay, when she says uh, the most, you know, the biggest, uh, the best, uh, uh, you know, uh, budget in 100 years, I think she was basically talking about the fact that this is unprecedented and it hasn't happened in 100 years. So I guess that's what she was relating to, saying that the last pandemic was 100 years ago. And this is a budget now that has to really uh, you know, respond to that. And she feels it will be a great budget. And I guess in, a, in, in many ways, it's been very challenging to balance the books and to find the money. Uh, yes. And of course, you can see the fiscal yes. deficit yes. has gone up to 9.5 percent. So I guess we just have to hope that everything that's been mentioned in this budget is rolled out fast. Because if it is just going to be in print and not in action, then we are in for trouble. But 
You know, also uh, right. Uh, question to well, I mean, question to everybody, uh, Kiran Shaw, Pranoy, as well, and the others on the panel about where is the government going to get the money to do this additional spending? Because just looking at the disinvestment targets that were being spoken about, which has been put to about 1.75 lakh crores, I was just getting our colleague Mariam to do a bit of research on last year. Last year, target set was 2.1 lakh crores. That was downward revised to only 32,000 crore. So if, if that is all we could achieve last year... Stock markets were booming. Yeah. Stock markets were booming last year. That was the time to privatize. By the way, a very important point that uh, the Forbes raised about uh, using the word privatization. Of course, it was uh, disinvestment was used five times to every one time privatization because disinvestment means, has meant, one public sector buying shares and the other public sector disinvestment ho gaya. You know, so privatization is a is a key word and I think thank you for pointing that out. Yeah. But that still raises the question which uh, which still remains fully I'm not sure if it's fully answered in the budget, uh, Kiran Shaw, about where is the additional funds going to come from for this for this spending. Yeah. Ta you know, there's not been any great increase in taxation. So Where's the revenue? Where's the money coming from? Bonds. bonds. Well, they've talked about zero-rated uh, bonds. They're talking about uh, making it easier for uh, FDI, NRIs. They're just hoping that they can find it from any and every source. But you're right. I think no more uh, attention has to be paid to exactly how are they going to fund all this very, very bold uh, infrastructure spending that they've talked about. Okay. Because they talked about privatizing toll roads, the NHAIs and things like that. But where's the money even in the private sector? So I think we need... And they have looked at uh, basically tax uh, holidays for people investing in these kind of uh, areas. So let's see if people are really going to invest seriously. Right. Do you see that, Mr. Kirloskar? Yeah, you know, we can... I, I said I'm highly motivated because I haven't seen so much, so many surprises in the budget. But I think we have to look at, uh, you know, government can do so much with the limited resources that are there. We have to look at industry and individuals as well. We have to figure out all the productivity improvements, new working styles we learned in the last eight, 10 months in trying to get, you know, cut our costs, get ourselves more competitive, right, right. Uh, get our products out. How do we enhance all that more? I think we've learned a lot. Right. And uh, this, this has to be, it can't be just an effort of a government mm. uh, and a budget to get the economy going. I think all of us have to work a little harder and more productively, uh, uh, try to make uh, you know, world-class products, world-class pricing uh, to get the economy going. So I, I'm I'm motivated again. Like I said, I don't I, I didn't see so many changes. That's the for me. That's the best thing about the budget. That the that there are very few but, surprises. Okay. But Vikram Kirloskar, can yeah. I can I just interrupt and say sure, you're sounding sure, sure. like you know a cricket commentator when they say <laughs> when they say if India bats well and bowls well <laughs> and if our fielding is good, we'll win the match. We may win the match. Yeah, <laughs> so, we may. It is, but we, we have, have to all try. All <laughs> We have to all try. Yeah. We can't. We can. We can sit and and you know analyze and criticize till the cows go home. But no, I we, think, have I think be, we have to be. We have to be Virat Kohli and Rishabh Pant. That's what we have to be. <laughs> in fact, implementation. <laughs> in fact, uh, that's what the chief economic advisor said when he was announcing the economic survey. He said, "You're going to see Ajinkya Rahane and Rishabh Pant in action today." Uh, not sure if we, if that's the <laughs> combination we got, but uh, Sandeep Somani is also with us, past president Fiki, vice chairman and managing director Somani Impressa. Uh, thank you, Mr. Somani. Just uh, same question to, to you at the outset. What jumped out to you in this budget? Did it turn out to be that kind of game-changing budget that it was meant to be or not really? So, good afternoon. Uh, thank you for having me over. I think uh, considering the very difficult circumstances the world is going through and, uh, uh, you know, we've had uh, uh, lack of revenue in the government because of the COVID, I think it's an excellent budget. Uh, you know, they have the directionality is good. 
the content is good the government maintains its strategic focus on what is important for india lot of investment in social infrastructure lot of investment proposed in physical infrastructure i think uh, gradual reduction in the fiscal deficit and no sudden uh, you know compression of the deficit which would have then uh, taken away from the resources a uh, four year period to bring down the fiscal deficit to uh, 4% i think that's uh, a good 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 initiative a uh, lot of aggressive disinvestment targets including two psu banks one insurance company in the current year uh, itself uh, interesting road map uh, for uh, infrastructure projects funding uh, further a new institution be to be created for further infrastructure funding so i think it's ticking all the right uh, boxes no tinkering with taxes uh, so getting away from the uh, you know uh, opportunity to do some quick fixes and thinking long term i think these are all very very good moves i think industry we could not have expected a better budget given the circumstances under which it has been made okay yeah all right uh Prana Shobana Kamineni also is with us, Executive uh, VC Apollo Hospitals Group. She has also been past president CII. Good to have you back, Shobana Kamineni. Uh, your your thoughts on the budget, particularly because we are talking about the health uh, increasing, the outlay on health, and there has been this Prime Minister Atmanirbhar Swasthya Yojana, which the Finance Minister announced, said 64,000 crores will be spent, uh, but over six years. Is that still uh, when you, when you answer in your answer can you give can you give a balance of both positive and one or two negatives i mean which worry you both positive and negative otherwise it's a bit bit you know we've said this for years on uh, on our budget program that everybody on air says 8 out of 10 9 out of 10 and in the ad break they turn to us and say what kind of budget is this yaar <laughs> and then you come on air and they say 9 out of 10 <laughs> and they also but, joke among themselves saying that uh, but before but that you don't you are actually <laughs> yeah sorry before that i'm told uh, pranav nitin ahead, gadkari is giving his first reaction union minister let's just quickly dip in and come back aur isme research ho taki hamari automobile industry jo hai swavalambi bane aur hum log hamare world mein hamari technology ke aadhar par hame koi import karne ki avashyakta nahi pade to abhi pehli baat to aise hai ki humne लिथियम आयन बैटरी हमको इंपोर्ट करनी पड़ती है तो इसका भी काम हमने शुरू किया ये जो स्क्रैपिंग पॉलिसी हुई है इसमें 51 वन लैख लाइट मोटर व्हीकल जो है जो 20 साल से पुराने हैं ये स्क्रैप हो जाएंगे तो जो गाड़ी स्क्रैप करेगा वो नहीं लेने वाला ही है तो ये ऑटोमोबाइल इंडस्ट्री को और बढ़ावा मिलेगा थर्टी फोर लाइट मोटर व्हीकल आर ओल्डर देन फिफ्टीन ईयर्स and 51 lakh light motor vehicle are older than 20 years baad mein 17 lakh medium and heavy commercial vehicle 17 lakh older than 15 years without valid fitness certificate ab ye 17 lakh aur ye jo ye sankhya jo hai ye main je dekh raha hu ye kareeb 1 crore se zyada vehicle hai ye pollution kar rahe the क्योंकि जितना पुरानी टेक्नोलॉजी है वो एयर पोल्यूशन भी कर रहे थे फ्यूल भी ज्यादा खा रहे थे तो अब ये और अदर ओल्डर व्हीकल पोल्यूट टेन टू ट्वेल्व टाइम्स मोर देन फिट व्हीकल यानी दस से बारह गुना ज्यादा पोल्यूशन कर रहे थे तो पहली बात तो ऐसी है कि रिड्यूस पोल्यूशन रिड्यूस पॉपुलेशन ऑफ ओल्ड एंड डिफेक्टिव व्हीकल्स ऑन रोड ये पहला एडवांटेज में पोल्यूशन कम होगा दूसरा एडवांटेज पच्चीस से तीस रिडक्शन इन व्हीकुलर एयर पोल्यूटेंट्स इसमें इसकी कमी होगी तीसरी बात इंप्रूव रोड सेफ्टी न्यू न्यूअर व्हीकल मीट रोड सेफ्टी स्टैंडर्ड्स बिकॉज ऑफ इंप्रूव मटेरियल एंड व्हीकल टेक्नोलॉजी इसमें फायदा ये होगा कि जो स्क्रैपिंग होगा तो स्टील रबर एल्यूमिनियम कॉपर जो वेस्ट निकलेगा अभी हम लोग कॉपर इम्पोर्ट कर रहे हैं एल्यूमिनियम इम्पोर्ट कर रहे हैं और मैं आपको पहले बता चुका हूं कि हमने हमारे पोर्ट का मैं जब मंत्री था तो ये ये इसी के लिए अठारह अठारह मीटर ड्राफ्ट बढ़ा तो दुनिया का भंगार दो लाख टन के शिप में अपने यहां आएगा वो बहुत सस्ता आएगा थ्रोइंग प्राइस पे आएगा और फिर उससे हम लोग सेग्रीगेट करेंगे मेटल को 
एल्यूमिनियम कॉपर प्लास्टिक रबर और फिर उसका रिसाइकलिंग करेंगे तो जो स्पेयर पार्ट सौ रूपये में मिलता था वो साठ रूपये या ओके सॉरी दैट वॉज रोड ट्रांसपोर्ट मिनिस्टर नितिन गडकरी आउटलाइनिंग द स्क्रैपेज पॉलिसी विच वॉज अनाउंस्ड इनफैक्ट आई थिंक वीक गो एंड अगेन सर ऑफ अंडरलाइन इन द बजट by the finance minister sorry shobhana khaminani let's go back to you for the good bad and the ugly of the budget so so that's what uh, i i'm glad that i got a minute to churn about what i should say that uh, you know that pranoy cha- challenged me so you know basically oh, no. this is an amazing budget for for uh, for health 137% more being spent than ever but uh, but just remember who that's being spent for and i think these are the people that were the most underserved so this is not going to come to you and me there's no benefit of this in you know when they're opening rural because we're not moving to the rural area so that then uh, the the 64000 crores that will be spent for primary secondary and tertiary over the next 6 years that's 10000 crores it's not going to be in the cities so mm. so that's not going to come to us again uh, the the uh, the covid vaccine um, everyone is you know that's fantastic and i think that's part of survive and and i'm proud of india for being able to give uh, the doses for people over 50 free and but i just would like to see that rolled out further i mean as fast as possible and then again private sector will find will find a place and we have to so i think my my message here is that everything that we see i mean even the economic survey i'm i'm trying to find the value of what the government finds in us and and i think that's super important for people that that today 80% of healthcare is actually being borne by private sector where in the budget has that come to be able to encourage new private sector investment and then i think what we need to do is to be able to be uh, to be to serve the indians in the cities that we all live in and to serve them better we need to keep up to the latest medicine we need to prepare for the next pandemic so so i would think that uh, the larger part of the budget of keeping the taxes or putting pe- money in people's hands all that will flow into making when the economy is looking good i think that healthcare will also improve so so i'm finding right. that while i'm happy that they're spending there not much of it will will uh, is is in the private sector and we'll continue to do our job but uh just one thing when you said that the 64000 crores because again we were talking about this earlier there's a little bit of the fine print that it's 64000 crores in this under this health scheme over 6 years so it's actually 10000 10, crores a year yeah. mm. 10000 crore a year is that actually a significant um, enough amount no i think uh, look at it holistically because i think that uh, you know once telemedicine comes in so much did you did you see that they're going to put cdcs so Very and then the national the national health uh, mission that mm. creates the stack so so much information is going to go into this so the government has thought through all this quite cleverly because it gives to give you know so such a detailed budget for health that means that this is not just not thought through so so there's someone in there there are a bunch of very smart people who have thought through and this money is enough you didn't believe the money was enough when aishman bharat came that money was enough for to give insurance and and now i think with the amount of data that's available with the government i think that uh, the, that their task of of giving health to people 500 million people they they probably have a great chance remember it's 137% more that is going to be spent for for the deserving you know for the underserved so i'm okay happy to, to about that okay you and me you and me will have another discussion <laughs> okay fair enough uh right. pranoy also uh, we've got uh, mr shubhrakat panda vice president fiki and also managing director indian metals and ferro alloys limited but first let's go to vinak chatterji who's uh, chairing the CII infrastructure council and regarded as the infra guru of uh, indian industry vinayak chatterjee thanks for being with us uh, your initial take is this a kind of game changer budget or as uh, noshad forbes was saying earlier that this was a an extraordinary time but we got a business as usual budget this is 
an extraordinary budget. It is a game changer budget. And as you know, I see it through my lens of infrastructure. It is well conceived, sure. well structured, thoughtful and practical. And I can tell you that I have noticed six very major thrusts in infrastructure and the corridors the whispers in the corridors uh, at CII here is almost that it's an infrastructure budget. If you add up all the allocations and the, and the text, much of it was focused on infra, which is to be expected, which is what we had desired uh, to actually kickstart the economy as well as you know, give the necessary impetus to public works and infra spends. Let me very quickly tell you the six broad areas that I think the, the FM uh, alluded to. Number one mm -hmm. is a historic creation of a new developmental financial institution for the sector. I mean, we are going back to when India was starved of capital in the 60s and late 50s, when a large, large swath of Indian uh, industrial capital was built by the three mm -hmm. DFIs. And now we have a new DFI where a new bill will be tabled. It will be under an act of parliament. And a new in institution will be created to fund infra and public works for uh, which would have economic returns as distinct from purely private sector financial returns. The second is a, we're a very thoughtful blueprint on asset monetization. I will not go into the details. Mm. The third is a substantial increase in capex, 34% increase in capex for infra on top of a 22% increase in the last year's budget. 4.12 lakh crores allocation in last year's budget now becomes a 5.54 lakh crore allocation, a 34% increase, I think the largest ever that I've seen in the last many decades that I've been covering it with you and Pronoy and others. Mm. Fourth, fourth uh, major thrust area was, let's call it simply the shadow bank bank, the shadow bad bank, which is the combination of the stressed asset company and the stressed asset management company. Mm. This is as close to a bad bank that you would get that will pick up assets and then run them or divest them or do whatever and take away the stress from the commercial banking system. So you actually have now a shadow bad bank which the sector has been crying out for. You have got again a very thoughtful move on an extended <coughs> list of strategic divestment of <coughs> central public sector undertakings. And I overheard some creative scheme of motivating states to sell off their defunct state PSUs also. And that needs a little more investigation. And finally, strategic thrust number six is a far more friendlier tax regime for foreign investors in infra. So just to recap, six broad thrusts in what is almost being called a healthcare agri infra budget, institutional Inter in intervention, a DFI, number two, asset monetization, number three, substantial increase in CapEx, mm -hmm. number four, a stressed asset management uh, solution, number five, strategic divestment of but CPUs, <laughs> and six, okay. a friendlier tax regime for the for many foreign funds who are interested good in point. investing in infra. But let me stop here. Very good points. I think these are very good points. They are, they are uh, real positives in the budget, yeah. That's, but I, I just, I did have a quick follow-up, uh, if I may, Vinayak Chatterjee, that uh, while many of these points certainly on paper are laudable, isn't this also a song we've heard before? When you talk about a DFI or, a, or banks for infrastructure funding, they already exist. Many of them are deeply stressed. We've seen what's happened to the NBFCs, the shadow banks, who are involved in infrastructure lending, stressed and or embroiled in scams. Again, when you talk of disinvestment, Last year, again, ambitious targets, something like 2 lakh crores, only ended up downward revised to 32,000 crores. So is there a gap between well, uh, of course, know, theory I can't and practice? That. I think the, the job of the budget and the finance minister is actually to create the framework, the vision, and the blueprint for the direction in which she wishes the country to go. Now, the implementation to my mind, is the collective work of all senior cabinet ministers, including the prime minister. One of the things that worries me is now that the attention might actually shift from financing to these pipeline of projects which are ready for implementation. Mm. You know, to the national infrastructure pipeline envisages 20 lakh crores of shovel-ready projects on the ground, which can absorb 5 lakh crores, uh, which, which actually have a budget of 20 lakh crores. Now, if you see it, the budget allocates 5 lakh crores, we still have 15 lakh crores to, 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 to organize. And that right. itself is a challenge. But the bigger challenge is that an infrastructure project or public works projects 
have a four-year life from concept to being ready to commissioning and which means that if you got to invest 20 lakh crores in a year you need a funnel of 20 into 4 80 lakh crores of shovel ready projects at different stages of incubation I am afraid we do not have such a large bank of projects assuming for a minute that the finance issue was solved so now the attention will also shift to what we call the project implementation stresses and one of the bodies that I have been recommending I remember 2012 to 2014 the mm. last two years of the UPA government when stressed assets were touching about 17 lakh crores yeah. they set up a project management group under a dynamic IAS officer called Anil Swaroop That's and right. he was able to bring down 10 to about 7 or 8 so in along similar lines though not exactly the same I would like to advocate an infrastructure project group of very senior dynamic set, uh, uh, officers as well as co-opted professionals from the private sector attached to the PMO who will cut through the entire red tape of permissions, uh, regulations, clearances and even conceptualize 80 lakh crores of projects. So right. increasingly on channels like yours, yeah. the discussion should move away from financing into implementation. how ready are we for 20 lakh crores of project implementation okay. year fair, after fair, year after year without point. any hassles. So fair your point, point is fair, well made. Fair, fair point about that uh, well project. Well made point but we keep saying that. Yes, go ahead. We keep saying that Tonight. and again I must say it just sounds like uh, a w important point that we must do better. We must, we've been saying that for so many years. It's like I, as I mentioned the cricket commentator, if we bat well, bowl well and field well, we may actually uh, may win the match what we need is all that to change that we've been saying for you know 50 years we've got to get our implementation right we've got to get good officers honest officers honest people get it all going intelligent plans uh, but that you know and no, you I say it's not the finance minister's fault I agree. <laughs> okay yeah, there are some sectors that have okay. shown that we can do it. Now, remember, yeah. the peak yeah. National yeah. Highway Authority yeah. in normal times reached a peak of 20 Roads have done very well. kilometers yes. per day. I in, totally yeah. agree. In the middle, in the middle of done COVID, very well. in the middle yeah. of COVID, Highways. we were able to do yeah. 23 kilometers a day. So there is a there is obviously an institutional structure, right. not which perfect, can do it. which can okay. demonstrate it. Now, if Let you see the pace of railway projects being implemented now yeah. in the last two three years, it is showing similar trends mm -hmm. to national. Highways. Right. So, so sector by sector, we need to get our act together on implementation. Okay, fair and enough. Some of the sectors have shown, like that you rural can electrification. Do it. Right. You know, Are electrifying, there? we can do it. Okay. In fact, rural electrification, null se jal, these programs show that we can do it. You yes. can do it if yeah. you want. Okay, Ajay, Ajay Sriram uh, is also with us, uh, DCM Sriram Limited, past present CII. Uh, Mr. Sriram, uh, you've, you've had some time to look at the budget. Yeah. What, what, jumps out to you as positives, but also uh, do you have any concerns? Do you feel there were areas which weren't addressed? You know, when I, I uh, see the, heard the budget through, one point which hit me, and I think that's a good thing, is the acceptance that the fiscal deficit will be at the range of 9.5%. I think one is not trying to beat around the bush on that. That is a very clear direction. So one knows that one has a task ahead. Next year's target of 6.8%. And to bring it down over the next four years. I think that's a very realistic way to look at it and not try to shortchange the system in any manner. I think secondly, the entire focus which has been given on the capital expenditure side across the board. I think that's a positive because that's what generates demand, that's what gives jobs, and that's what gives income. So I think that's a positive side. Disinvestment and privatization. I, I, I heard a couple of people also speaking on this. And it's a fact, last year we came nowhere near our target. But this time she has talked about the same issue, the same companies which were talked about last year. Yes. As it seems, the focus is stronger. I think it will be a little better this time to get what they want. And I think what is a good thing this year, there are no new taxes. That was something which was very much on the agenda. Sure. And the feeling was that there would be something but. And just one or two small things which came out in the budget, which has not been talked about before, mm. which are out of the box. One is, she talked about a, nat a national hydrogen mission. Yes. And generating hydrogen from green sources in the long run. Yes, clean energy. A great innovative direction. She talked about women working throughout, including the night shift. I think these are positives 
a digital census. Yes. You know, these are steps in the right direction. Also, uh, a one-person company. You can now register uh, a one-person company. So, so that's again supposed to make compliance easier. All right, fair enough. Uh, Ajay Shriram, uh, thank you very much indeed. I believe uh, you have to go. I believe uh, Mr. Shubhrakant Panda uh, is, is still with us, uh, Mr. Panda. That's Sorry, right, we've not yes. had a chance to get uh, your, your, yes, uh, go ahead, Mr. Panda, your, your thoughts on the budget, the good, bad and the ugly. Well, I think there are a lot of positive points, uh, as uh, both your uh, previous speakers have, uh, have mentioned. Um, you know, for one, I think it is a very comprehensive budget with, uh, with uh, well thought through uh, proposals which have been, uh, you know, of course, one will have to look at the fine print, but I think, um, you know, the homework is really solid on this uh, on this budget. Uh, but to begin with, the first point that at FICI we had been stressing upon is that uh, a once in a century pandemic calls for a for a unique kind of a budget where you cannot be constrained by fiscal de uh, mm. deficit norms. Uh, and from that point of view, I think to acknowledge uh, right off uh, uh, at the beginning to say that, uh, you know, the the, the uh, the fiscal deficit for uh, FY21 is 9.5%. Uh, mm. And to then have a, a, a sort of a, a progressive calibrated, uh, uh, you know, coming back to normalcy is exactly what, uh, what we had been advocating for. Because despite the V-shaped recovery, uh, there is also a realization that this is when growth needs to be nurtured, uh, steps need to be taken for, to, to, uh, to push both investment as well as consumption. And therefore, a sudden withdrawal I, of Mr. Panda. Uh, of, can I just uh, interrupt a second? Uh, can I? May I just ask you a question, sure. Mr. Panda? Uh, I agree with you. 9.5 percent is the figure, and uh, it's good to see there's some, uh, you know, uh, transparency in that figure. But can you explain to me why, with 9.5 percent, we still had a minus 7.7 percent growth in uh, GDP, which is three times higher than the other developing countries of the world? So, I mean, what are we doing wrong? I, I think if I can just point to one fact and ask you on this issue, mentioned in the economic survey, if you have a look at, and we keep saying implementation is a problem, implementation is a problem, just look at what the economic survey said. If we look at uh, that graph, it shows that on-ground implementation is a problem that we are facing. We suffer from over-regulation. Just look at that. Overall rank... 69 gone down to 74 quality of regulation gone down from 87 to 104 these are in five years this is from the economic survey improper influence used to get anything done gone down in the world from 74th which was pretty low now we are 107 so much improper uh, influence is being used uh, timeliness has got worse uh, the good point is that okay we've gone up in due process but you have due process, but all these problems. And, you know, we are talking about startup, one person. We are 130th in the world in start -up, starting a business. And here's a country which is known for entrepreneurship, for intelligence. We do so well when we, we are uh, uh, in other countries. And you just register a property. We are so bad. We are 154th in the world. So now, you know, I'm just saying this is what implementation is about. If we're going down, 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 according to the economic survey, that we are not tackling that. So, it's, let, me, again, so let me respond. It's just living so, on hope. Yeah, so let please, me please, please, please. Let me respond to that. In as much as ease of doing business is concerned, you know, while a lot has been done, I don't think there is any denying that a lot more needs to be done. Uh, and, uh, and it needs to be uh, uh, something that we simply cannot take our uh, eyes off the ball. And uh, you know, having said that, there are there are uh, measures which are being uh, which have uh, even in this budget been talked about, which is uh, 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 collating all the various uh, laws and regulations in the financial sector into a single securities code. But yeah. let me, Pranav, let me get back to your uh, your, the, your first point about uh, 23 point. Uh, I'm sorry, 7.7 uh, percent uh, GDP contraction for the year. The devil, of course, lies in the details because you know what we started out with in the first quarter, which was terribly hit by 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 the pandemic. Was a was an unprecedented 23.7 percent contraction of GDP, so, but if you look uh, look uh, deeper into the details, as I'm sure you would have, that the 7.7 percent contraction for the year uh, in, uh, in, uh, includes a meager 0.1 percent contraction for the second half. 
So there is a sharp bounce back. I mean, but having said that, no one can deny that, uh, you know, the first three, four months, uh, perhaps the first half of the year was was significantly affected by COVID. And it takes some doing to, to, uh, to you know, bounce out of that. But uh, like, and that's but, where... Just to respond to you, just to point. respond to you, you're absolutely right. Uh, the second half has been much better, but it's been much better all over the world. Other places have been positive. Uh, they're going to grow by... You know, they've been growing faster. Bottom line is, we did, we lost 7.7% of our GDP, while, which was the worst in the world. Mm. We can't get away from that. It, it's just something we should have, I feel, uh, both the economic survey, which was too much of a positive uh, spin on everything, better to, as they, you know the word, introspect, what have we done wrong and what can we improve? That's what we wanted to see. Right. I mean, with these kind of figures in the economic survey, where things are going down on the, you know, in implementation, it's a big worry and, and we don't know how to change all that. Let, let me, let's actually... But I get your point. Let's, it's getting let's better, take it's that, getting better. <laughs> let's take that actually, Pradoy, to uh, Mr. TV. Narendran is with us. He's both uh, president-designate at CII and he's also CEO and managing director of Tata Steel, uh, great to have you on, Mr. Narendran. Just your uh, thoughts on the budget and also just to ask you that while many of you have come on and said that the intent signaled has been quite positive, are you also concerned that it actually comes to implementation, to making promises? We've heard many of these promises and predictions in the past, but there is still a question about how it actually translates on the ground. Sure. So I think a lot that CII has been asking for has got addressed. We said focus on infrastructure. We said uh, let's have a glide path to the fiscal deficit numbers that we're chasing, so on and so forth. So to that extent, the number of uh, things that we'd asked for is reflected there. Stability on tax rates, uh, uh, you know, a focus on health care, et cetera. So there are many things which have happened. But yes, ultimately, it boils down to how we can translate it into activity on the ground. I think over the last few months, I did hear uh, Pranoy's questions and the discussions just before this. Uh, I think Q1 was particularly bad in the last year uh, when we had a complete lockdown. And I think uh, the recovery post that lockdown uh, has been uh, quicker than we thought, at least uh, in the October, December quarter and the current quarter. And it has also been helped by the fact that globally, the recovery has been faster than we had expected, particularly in countries like China. So I think India, uh, to my mind, from an industry perspective, many of us feel that the recovery has been better than uh, we had anticipated uh, when we were in April, May, June. And uh, that's reflecting in the numbers uh, which the corporates are uh, uh, announcing. The key question is when does the investment cycle come back? And I think it'll take some more time for that. But implementation on the ground is key. I think uh, some of the revenue targets set by the government to come from divestment uh, is aggressive. It was aggressive last year. Last year was a pandemic year. They didn't get anywhere close to that. Let's hope they get some of it this year or most of it. Also, the focus on monetization, I think, is important. In addition to divestment, if they can monetize some of the government assets, that will also help the revenues. Otherwise, uh, the glide path on the fiscal deficit uh, would be challenging if we can't uh, get the revenues up. But the GST collections in the last four months has certainly been encouraging. Right. Uh, uh, Mr. Rainer, yes. very, very, very good points. I totally agree with that. Um, it was a bit worrying that the divestment last year was nowhere near the target. I think Vasu gave the exact figures. And it was a great year for because the stock market just boomed in that. That was the time to disinvest or privatize. I, let's use the word privatize. Disinvest often means one public sector buying from another public sector. Privatize. So the point you make is crucial. That It's very dependent on that. But... I mean, uh, we have great, great respect for Tata Seal. You are world leaders in, in, this, in this sector. Your procedures, your quality, all outstanding. How has your personal industry, your personal sector, not your, your firm, your sector, how has that been affected? And how, is it, how much is it bouncing back? So we, uh, uh, you know, when... We had the lockdown. The complexity we had to deal with uh, was with keeping the plants running. We were allowed to run because it is an essential commodity. But uh, because most of the supply chain was closed, uh, we struggled to keep the plant running. But what helped us, honestly, in the April, May, June quarter was the recovery in China. 
and China from being a net exporter of steel became a net importer of steel, which helped the steel industry globally, helped Tata Steel. And very ironically, the Indian steel industry was exporting more than a million tons of steel to China when the rest of India was closed down, you know. Mm -hmm. And as the Indian market recovered, we saw the recovery in the rural markets first, a strong monsoon uh, uh, supported by the focus on rural infrastructure, Mandrega schemes, the mig uh, migrant workers going back to their villages and uh, being active there. All this led to the rural economy picking up faster than we had thought. That was, I'm talking of July, August, September. And then uh, from October, the auto industry started picking up, which was a bit surprising for us at that point in time. But uh, it stayed beyond the festival because uh, there was a lot of expectation that after Diwali, it would slow down. Well, it has continued. And now I think some of the infrastructure spend is flowing through. The liquidity that was pumped into the market has also flown through to, uh, uh, to the MSMEs and many others. And that's the recovery. But obviously, the recovery is against a low base. And... Uh, uh, you know, next year's recovery will be even more critical, the way I see it. So, uh, just to right, just right. to ask you a follow-up to that, uh, Mr. Narendran, you were saying that you did start to see uh, a bounce back in domestic consumption for Tata Steel as well. It was not just exporting to China. But if you were to compare your output and your revenues now to pre-pandemic, is it almost at the same level or are you still below? Now it is at the same level, you know, but you must keep in mind that even before the pandemic, uh, uh, the economic activity had slowed down quite a bit. Uh, mm. Auto is a big consuming sector for us. Uh, they were in doldrums even before the pandemic. So from right. that point of view, the recovery right. was happening right. just before the pandemic. We slipped again during the pandemic. So we've come back to where we were last year in January to March. So largely driven by domestic consumption. And I think there's a lot more construction happening, uh, investments in supply chains, industrial buildings, commercial uh, real estate is a bit slow, but residential is also picked up a bit. Mm. So across years, we are seeing activity, uh, which is positive. Okay. That's... And how much of yours yeah. is still exports? Now it's less than 10%. Uh, during the uh, pandemic, I mean, during the lockdown, we were 50% exports. Now we are less than 10%. Oh, that's... Okay. And so... your... If your pre-pandemic uh, turnover was 100, what is it now? pretty much 100. Okay. Okay, but you would normally have had a growth of 5, 10, 10 percent or something. So, okay, it's not bad at least, yeah. It's not bad. Uh, it's not bad. Uh, steel, in some sense, is uh, surrogate for a lot of the economic activity. I think uh, driven by yes, rural, yes, by yes. automotive, uh, uh, which picked up faster than we thought, and uh, some of the construction uh, happening. I think these are the three things which has uh, really helped us. Uh, recover faster than we thought. You know, honestly, I, the I didn't... Key think point, the key point, the key words you mentioned was we have had a, a improvement, but of a low base. That's why even with the improvement, we're still at the same level. And, uh, yeah. you know... So, there, we, we I mean, we pretty... Better thought, as we go along. Yeah. Be another year before we are back to pre-pandemic levels at a economic activity point of view. Yeah. Right. Uh, just... Just one last question. One more question. year before pre, to get to pre-pandemic. Yeah. Sorry. Oh, sorry. 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 Just Go a ahead clarification. Tonight. One more year to get to pre-pandemic levels. Okay. Yeah, I'm saying if you uh, have 11 percent growth on a 7 percent shrinkage, you're pretty much uh, back to where you were. Okay. Yeah, correct. Correct. Just, exactly. Just one quick question. You're, you're also a mathematician. You're also <laughs> a mathematician apart from being a steel person. <laughs> you're you're going to all our viewers, and especially Vasu. <laughs> I mean, you're talking about, you know, 11% on a low base, etc. You know, look at Vasu, he's sort of drifting off. Yeah, and I was, I was quickly trying to Google all of this uh, while I was off. But just <laughs> last, last quick question, Mr. Narendra. Thank you very much. Uh, because Niranjan Haranani also with yeah. us. But Mr. Narendra, when you said that you are seeing a recovery in diff across different sectors, small businesses, um, is that really the case though? Because the concern is, and this is something that has come out in various kind of analysis, including the RBI, that big corporates, big firms are consolidating, but a lot of small businesses, and especially the informal sector, are struggling. And some of them have even gone under, but they don't register on the data. Because the data doesn't capture, especially the informal economy. Yeah. Yeah, that is true. I think uh, uh, even within the steel industry, the, uh, there are a large number of smaller players who struggled more than the few larger guys. So I think that's there, uh, that's happening, uh, because uh, 
the high high fixed cost businesses like the larger companies have uh, you know quickly ramped up the volumes uh, and are able to uh, uh, you know benefit from the recovery in the demand the high variable cost businesses have struggled because the margins for them have continued to be low and many of the input costs have gone up some of the actions in the budget on reducing the uh, import duty on steel scrap which is important right. for it benefits msmes so i think some of those actions uh, are catering to the msmes in at least in our, our sector and i think the overall focus on msmes is to address this issue uh this high variable okay and... okay all right thank you very much indeed sir niranjan uh, hiranandani uh, very very good comments very good yes. comments thanks excellent comments niranjan uh, hiranandani is uh, with us of course of uh, hiranandani builders he's also currently president of naredco which is the national association of uh, the real estate developers uh, mr hiranandani Are you ready with your 12 out of 10 assessment, or uh, are you going to give us the real, <laughs> your honest? <laughs> sorry, no, no, I'm just joking. Is, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I think uh, the voices go up fluctuating. I'm not able to hear your question. Sorry. Oh, I see. Is this better? Can you hear me now, Mr. Hiranandani? Yes, I can. Yes, okay. Now I can hear you. I was saying, is it is it 12 out of 10 already? You've rated the budget, or are you going to be a bit more candid? <laughs> I, I i think the i think the But, budget should be somewhere 7 or 8 out of 10 because uh, i think uh, the positive side has been the investments into infrastructure and development mm -hmm. and i think a huge amount of expenditure into that section is really a positive story uh, as far as the uh, sectoral wise are concerned i think a lot more could have happened and uh, i think the in the real estate segment a lot is done in the affordable housing segment and uh, the benefits of a tax free nature in terms of the schemes under pmay and others has been continued for another one year which is positive and also the fact that certain state governments like maharashtra have brought down the stamp duty a combination of these two will certainly continue to uh, keep real estate at least in the affordable housing segment into good order so i think that part of it definitely is housing but uh, i do find that uh, we could have done much more in terms of the real estate segment especially in view of the fact that uh, we are a very large employer 15% of the total employment mm. in india it comes from real estate and in uh, uh, in infrastructure i think something more could have been done in that segment in terms of the rest of it for example uh, tax deducted in terms of uh, Uh, for the benefit of people who take interest is still 2 lakhs of rupees since last 15 years and i think we have been asking for 5 lakhs uh, that could have been done for the middle class and other people who borrow money is for the purposes of buying a house i think somewhere there and 43 ca i think is another issue which uh, has not been handled properly uh, where the ready reckoner rate is uh, not there they have given some time up to Uh, June day uh, of this year, in order to be 20% difference from ready reckoner rate, I think all those things uh, could have been tweaked much better. So while I am very very happy about the investments which the government is talking about, but uh, some lacuna is there in terms of what could have been achieved in terms of tweaking, and of course rationalisation of taxes. I just one second. You can't I have just come back to you, Mr. Nirmala. Just one second, and then say that. Uh, uh this is good enough for the economy it's not good at all okay. so i think yeah. some more rationalization I think that you, of taxes points, could have been done yeah. and uh, i i don't understand why 42% rate of tax is okay and on the other hand right. you give corporates right. 15 and 25% i think somewhere down the line msmes and other segments which are there would be disappointed in that segment right i think that's a very good points uh, and it really justifies your 7 to 8 out of 10 mm. uh, before i come to pavan goenka everybody is giving you about 7 to 8 70% to 80% budget but just to put 70 to 80% into perspective to get into a good college now you need 98% <laughs> you know that's the new norm so 70 to 80 colleges so i know what being, you're talking about <laughs> <laughs> so 70 to 80 you know you'll be not get into any college <laughs> mr pavan goenka are you 70 to 80% or 98% <laughs> uh 
for this budget. I cannot hear anything. Can I hear? Yeah. Hello? Yes. Mr. Goenka. Yeah, go ahead. Thank you for joining us. Uh, Mr. Pavan Goenka? Yes. Can you hear us? Uh, yes, I can hear you now. Right. Okay. No, uh, Pranoy was just asking you, are you also giving this uh, budget a 12 on 10 rating or uh, do you have mixed views? <laughs> well, I, I, don't, I don't give a rating uh, ever for the budget, uh, but I would give a thumbs up to this budget. Uh, the budget is focusing on all the right things that the industry had been asking for. Uh, it is a growth oriented budget uh, with a significant thrust on healthcare and on infrastructure. And these are the two things that industry has really prioritized. And so I would certainly give it a thumbs up. Uh, of course, there are areas that one always wishes uh, there was more, more off, but uh, I think overall, given where we are today, uh, the finance minister has done an excellent job in uh, creating a growth oriented budget. Right. Mr. Goenka, but uh, just to ask you as far as Mahindra, Mahindra itself is concerned, uh, because we were hearing that auto se sector generally is starting to see some revival. Where are well, you, uh, if, where but, are you uh, compared to, yes, no, just to understand, where as a overall as a group, where are you now in terms of revenue compared to pre-pandemic? Where are we compared to pre-pandemic in revenue? That's a very uh, a broad question and uh, I don't know how to answer that because it depends on which business you're talking about. Uh, there are several businesses of Mahindra that are doing much better than pre-pandemic and there are several businesses that are about at that level and some are lower. Uh, the one that is uh, really booming uh, is the tractor business. <laughs> That's a great answer. Uh, where the tractor industry has been really doing extremely well over the last uh, seven, eight months, uh, including what happened in the month of January with the 50% growth. Mm. Uh, the automotive business, uh, the demand is very Mr. good. Pavan but, uh, go Mr. Pavan Goenka, Mr. Goenka, I must say your answer, some are good, some are bad, and some are very bad, and some are very good. It's no, like I didn't a say Bengali very bad. Said, you know, how is it... No, okay, no, never very bad, okay. Uh, it's like a Bengali, when you say how are things, they say all depends. <laughs> yes, that is the correct answer because it all depends since Mahindra and Mahindra is not one business, <laughs> it is multiple business. Right, fair enough, fair enough actually. I'm just, uh, so uh, you, you, you feel overall an average for Mahindra and Mahindra compared to pre-pandemic, pre how much? Average. Uh, I'm sorry, I won't be able to answer that question because I don't have those numbers in front of me, so I okay. cannot give you an average increase. Fair in enough, fair enough. Yeah. But if you want fair to talk enough. about yeah. the impact fair of budget on our business, I can I can talk about that. Yes. Uh, okay, just a second. I just want that. to bring in Dorab here. Uh, yes. Vasu, you know, Dorab is being very silent, which is most unusual, uh, but he's, you know, getting lazy now. Just wanted to ask you, Dorab, a, a little bit of perspective on the deficit. You know, no. there's 9.5 and 6.3. There are two things I want to say. You know, Arvind Subramaniam said that day on your program that what we must get right is our numbers. When you say 9.5, what is it? The two things to look at. Firstly, does it include off-budget balance sheet items or does it not? Last year, the finance minister gave a deficit and also an indication of off-balance sheets, borrowing the food corporation, all kinds of other people. That's one point. Also, last year, this year, when you make a forecast, you forecast for each sector, like industry. Now, industry forecast, how is it made? On the basis of organized industry, like Mr. Goenka's industry. Then they say, look, this is 50%, so we add another 50% for unorganized. Now, this time, unorganized isn't wiped out. Unorganized accounts for about half the output and about 80% of employment. So the question is about time. We've been doing this for many years because the unorganized sector was very small. Now it's half the manufacturing sector. So we need to invest more in collecting data every year, not once every four years, and then using that proportion Quite for right. four years. I think we just need to get, you know, if you're spending lakhs of crores, perhaps we can spend a few thousand crores to collect data on the unorganized sector, which accounts for 80% of manufacturing employment yes. and almost half the output Chai. every year. So that we can then merge it Very and not an estimate yeah, yeah. or what it could be. Then your industrial output figure for next year, which may be 11%, may actually be down to 7%. And your whole number comes down. You know, we must get our data right. We can't get our data right. It's like an accountant. You can't get your books right. You don't know what's happening. 
And I think that's what we got to control. Right. No, that's a. And you, you of Dorab, you are in the unorganized sector, right? <laughs> yes. Yes. I am. You are in the organized sector, unfortunately, but I'm in the unorganized sector. <laughs> the story of my life. No complaints. Okay. Just, just one quick question, Mr. Pawan Goenka. Uh, I know you have to go. Uh, sorry, if you would just like to talk about that, if you, you said you'd like to talk about the impact of the budget on your business on Mahindra's. Uh, very quickly, what would that be, sir? Go ahead. Uh, if I look at uh, our uh, tractor business, uh, clearly there is a lot of thrust on the on the agri economy and uh, a lot of incentives that are being given for agriculture sector. So that should uh, go very well for our uh, our agriculture business, uh, both the tractor business as well as other agriculture businesses that we have. Uh, for automotive, uh, the scrappers policy uh, that we had been talking about for quite some time has been acknowledged in the budget. I'm saying acknowledged because uh, the details are not known yet. Uh, and I'm expecting that the Ministry of Road Transport will probably announce the policy very soon. And that policy should uh, should really uh, go down well for all auto companies, including Mahindra, of course. Uh, so these are the two primary businesses which should do which should do very well as a result of uh, 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 budget. Okay. All right. Fair uh, fair you. points, uh, Mr. Goenka. Thank you very much indeed for joining us. And also that very fascinating uh, figure you shared of information that the tractor sales have surged for Mahindra's at this time uh, when other aspects, other sectors of the economy uh, were not doing very well. Uh, Pranoy and Darab, uh, Chandrajit Banerjee also uh, joining us, Director General of uh, CII. Chandrajit Banerjee, we spoke uh, before the uh, budget. Uh, you had your CII wish list. Has almost every box been ticked? Yeah, quite a, quite a bit, I, I would imagine, uh, I, I can see. Uh, indeed, uh, one sees that a uh, large number of our recommendations finding place in the budget, especially uh, if you really look at, uh, uh, you know, we had focused on three uh, important points, Vasu, uh, uh, before we came into the budget. One mm -hmm. was lives, second was livelihood, third was growth. And I think the finance minister putting a phenomenal bet on growth is a great thing to see. And the reforms, especially that we have seen in the financial uh, financial uh, sector side, the, the bad banks which we had suggested, the DFI which we had been talking about, all of it are great things to see and I, I'm sure the type and, and, and the breach in the fiscal is something that we were talking about over a map of three to four years and she has talked about a three to four year, four year road map and uh, really betting on growth is what we were uh, focusing on and one sees that phenomenally done uh, through the budget. Okay. So, so you are quite, uh, by and large, happy. Uh, also with us is uh, our Mukundan uh, MD, Tata Chemicals Limited, the Chairman, CII National Committee on CSR. Uh, Mr. Mukundan, uh, good to have you uh, back once again. Uh, Mr. Mukundan, what, what do you think that the, that again, I mean, you know, this question that uh, trying to, again, zoom back a bit without getting into very specific on individual companies, that for a highly unusual year, there was the expectation of an unusual budget, a game-changing budget. Was this that budget or was this an incremental business-as-usual budget? So, uh, actually, uh, when we spoke in the mornings, you know, and you know that I said ta stability in taxation is critical. Mm. I think the budget has delivered that very clearly. Secondly, they needed to go out of the box in terms of resource mobilization. I think the budget, again, has delivered on that very well. Thirdly, we said that you know we need uh, we need some kind of an infrastructure financing methodology. I think this infrastructure financing uh, bank, that whole institution, which they're going to move, is a, is a step in the right direction. And the uh, bad loan, bad bad uh, books with the banks, I think need moving to go through asset reconstruction. I think those are all the right steps which we spoke. The second element in terms of the positive spending side, I think infrastructure spending has actually accelerated, which is a good move. Continued support to agriculture is a good move. And also on manufacturing, we spoke about PLI scheme. That, has, that is very much there in terms of incorpor being incorporated there. One added positive was the vehicle scrappage uh, scheme, which we don't know the details, but I think should come out. That, that would aid the uh, entire chain. And also specific thrust on the MSME in terms of you know the support to MSME was a very positive move. What I think maybe some, some, some of the areas which, which probably we, we had said very clearly needed a attention 
and there be funding need for them and they should provide especially in terms of health and infrastructure health and education i think government has done the right right thing so all in all i as we were walk, hearing the budget move forward it was almost like many of the things which we wanted are all there and i think it is now as rightly many people have said the government and the industry and the society at large now need to work uh, work hard to make sure that we come out of the pandemic much stronger much fitter and much more competitive okay all right uh, so at least on the tax front you felt that there was a uh, stability and uh, that uh, is something that uh, you are happy with uh, mr satish reddy is uh, also here with us today uh, he is uh, chairman cia of southern region and also chairman of dr reddy's uh, laboratories uh, mr reddy uh, welcome is it uh, good news for the health sector particularly uh, given the fact that the government has budgeted an extra outlay though there are some questions about the fact that it's staggered over 5 to 6 years this new pms atmanirbhar health scheme so is that really going to be enough for oh, such certainly this good news uh, srinivasan uh, because in terms of the outlay compared to what it used to be all these years there was a crying need to increase it even prior to the pandemic but the pandemic has kind of exacerbated it and uh, it, it, it's a good uh, thing that the government has taken a big step forward in increasing almost 137% uh, you know the whole outlay covering several areas again covering infrastructure establishment of uh, you know public health labs establishing uh, you know bio safety labs whole host of things which they have talked about as uh, their intention uh, it's certainly a step in the right direction what is also important is this 34000 crores which they have earmarked for uh, vaccination which certainly is definitely above expectations uh, from what all of us thought okay anything at yeah, all just to uh, yes, i think just to, uh, yes, just yes. to just to say uh, just to follow up actually a point that you made earlier vasu um it's excellent that 35000 crores for covid vaccination really really uh, uh, commendable and needed Uh, but as vasu pointed out earlier 64000 crores extra for health over 6 years you know that's like uh, 10 to 15000 a year is is that enough for a sector that is crying out you know we really uh, this whole pandemic has exposed weaknesses in our healthcare sector we have dedicated people dedicated doctors dedicated uh, nurses and uh, all the all the medical personnel but the infrastructure and we're going to have 10 to 15000 crores a year extra is that enough so that's that's a good question to raise thank you i've had the answer but i would assume the following right so one is you know what needs to get built and over what period of time and also that the healthcare is a state subject also uh, there could probably some be some allocations in the state budgets also to take care of that Uh, but i was just looking at the overall right. uh, uh, and then that's that's where i felt comfortable uh, for now but again like i said probably we have to see the specifics of which allocation to which particular head and you know how much is it going to be per year maybe that that will clarify some of things i agree with that yeah that will be we can do that during the day now yeah when we read the fine print quite true quite true okay uh also with us uh Uh, joining us uh, from the CII venue is Mr. Deepak Shetty, Deputy CEO and Managing Director, JCB uh, India Limited. Uh, JCB, of course, with the earth movers and other equipment. Uh, Mr. Shetty, what, what do you make of the budget with the big push on infrastructure? Is that good news for JCB? Oh, absolutely. Um, and uh, even leading up to the budget, we have been uh, in various forums. We have been talking about the DFI. uh allocating the fund to the national infrastructure pipeline which has been announced and and also the focus on the rural infrastructure i think uh, uh full marks full focus on uh, on all these key demands and particularly what is very heartening to see is uh the allocation to the highways the new highways but also very important focus on developing the rural health healthcare infrastructure which will help and also allotment of uh, funds to the state government because some of the rural infrastructure is supported by the funds from the state government so overall a very positive budget from the infrastructure point of view and certainly for jcb and uh, last few months we have seen a, a big push in the rural infrastructure development mm. and i'm sure 
this uh, the fund allocation during uh, as a part of this budget will is going to give further fillip to this uh, whole development which is taking place in bharat your uh, your your how are your sales though jcb sales are they back up to pre pandemic levels or still below i think last few months uh, we have seen uh, green shoots and uh, uh, consistently month on month uh, uh, they have come back and certainly i'm very pleased to inform you that last 3 months uh, they have not only reached the pre pandemic level but they have crossed the the pre pandemic level so so very heartening and uh, i just want to mention here that uh, we connect very closely with our machines through the mm. uh, telematics based platform yes. and and we are very seeing we are seeing positive utilizations of the machines in the rural areas so it is really the rural economy which is uh, which is which is pushing the sales for machines right just uh, one last question though because many of you have come and spoken about the fact that the additional spending on infrastructure or the push towards infrastructure is a good sign uh, do you do you feel that there is the intent to walk the talk because in every budget there are huge announcements and allotments towards infrastructure but it's unclear whether that money actually gets spent in the end so what has been your experience of this i think it's a very important point you are raising and in the past we certainly saw that there was a gap between the the talk and the walk but what we have seen post pandemic is certainly there has been focus also one very important uh, factor was uh, payment of bills of the major account ma major contractors and after pandemic we saw that uh, during the course of the pandemic we saw that there was certainly an intention to hasten the payment and which has helped so this has been a big change the gap of like 6 months in the past has now moved to week 10 days that is the feedback we are getting from our major account customers and contractors and i am i hope that this continues so that if people are paid on time and then then they will continue to invest in more and more projects okay right so this time you believe that there is going to be a, a greater a walking of the talk but uh, at the same time uh, pradoy there of the question is and this is something that uh, someone was bringing up earlier in our in our uh, morning panel this is madam sadnavis of care ratings who is saying that is there too much of an expectation that the government will be able to spend its way out of the crisis because the capital expenditure of the government which is what it spends on roads bridges and all of that is only about 4 lakh crores 4 4 and a half lakh crores that's gone up to about 5 lakh crores this time government is saying that it's an increase of 35% Uh, which is a big jump but overall 4 to 5 lakh crores enough to really revitalize the economy i think overall on the economy certainly uh, i'm sure the government would look at other um, opportunities particularly from the from the monetization of assets uh but if i specifically talk yeah. about the uh, infrastructure sector yeah. i think this whole focus on dfi will be will be very positive and i think that right. was the big gap that we had and also encouragement of foreign right, funds right. to uh, invest in in projects in india uh i'm sure uh, th this will right. i just wanted to make one point gap. sir uh, it, we'll sorry to interrupt you sorry to interrupt just one second um you were just mentioning many before you have just mentioning a very heartening point that agriculture the rural areas are at are really helping us right now and i was just uh, picking up uh, my phone to get some data which koshik koshik basu has uh, you know circulated and it really is an eye opener when you and it goes uh, to your point is this enough are we uh, you know supporting enough support for agriculture in terms of subsidies government subsidies to agriculture in india is 11 billion dollars guess what it is in china it's 11 billion here in china 185 billion okay forget china's a different league but 11 compared to 185 compare india's 11 with indonesia this is all koshik basu has circulated this indonesia the subsidy to a much smaller country subsidy to their agriculture is 29 billion and india is 11 billion so i think it's what the, the question you raised was was very important is it enough uh, we are really grateful to agricultural uh, sector and we are spending 11 billion dollars in subsidies that's one third 
what Indonesia is giving as subsidy and one eighteenth what China is giving as subsidy. So, yes. you know, we need to rethink, we need, to, these figures are really alarming actually. You're, Get my point? That's a, no, that's a, that's a great point and we'll have to actually look at the budget to see what is the enhanced outlay to the agriculture sector because what Nirmala Sitaraman ended up doing was simply list the amount that the government is spending on procurement under the, you know, the, the food subsidy program, uh, which is, as I said, a matter of course, that there is obviously going to be enhanced procurement in terms of the amount the government spends because the minimum support price keeps going up to keep pace with inflation. She didn't specifically mention how much is the increased outlay to agriculture. In fact, Pranoy, uh, as we know, there's a scheme called the PM Kisan, where the government gives 6,000 rupees to farmers every year, 2,000 rupees every three months. There was an expectation that that may right. be increased, especially given the political context with the farmers' protests and so on. Uh, but there doesn't seem to be any evidence of that. So I think it's a very valuable point you made, and I think we need, do need to go into the budget papers to see exactly what's been the change in outlay uh, when it comes to agriculture. Yeah, one more point I wanted to ask you. Um, that is that... Everybody is saying, you know, one thing really good about this budget, there are no surprises and, uh, you know, it's uh, stability and no, no, thank God, no surprises. And uh, I just feel that when you had the biggest surprise you could ever have over the last year, this is a time for a surprise in the budget. <laughs> you don't want stability and continuity when you've just had a shock, unmatched shock again over a hundred years. So I would have liked a few more surprises, wouldn't you? The fact that there's no surprise is a bit disappointing, but it's been made as a most positive point. <laughs> and one more question for CII. One more question. You know, they, everybody's saying we have they, a lot of it is due to what we said, and you know, so we can blame them, etc. But they said many of the boxes we gave have been ticked. Which were the boxes they gave that have not been ticked? We would like to hear that. That's Why are you laughing? I'm serious. <laughs> no, no, I'm, I'm only laughing because Chandrajit Banerjee, who is, uh, who would have been a good person to answer that, is uh, has had to leave. But uh, perhaps we'll we can get ask. Him back. Our... We'll get him back. He, he, he's knowledgeable on this. Yeah. <laughs> okay, but Piyush Kambata is here with us, who's uh, chairman CIR National Committee on Special Abilities, CIR Task Force on Ease of Doing Business, also chairman of Rasna Private uh, Limited, which we all grew up drinking. Uh, Piyush Kambata, uh, Piruz Kambata, I beg your pardon. Uh, what is, what is the, what were the CII's demands that were not met? No, I think if you ask me, we are very happy as you just now said that there is no further tax because I, we didn't want another COVID tax. But I think in terms of the good news is that there are a lot of, a lot of things have happened in the agri space. And I think we, we all in CI also believe that and we all industrialists believe that we need to be partners with the agriculturist and with the government in ensuring that the agri sector comes to speed yes. with the rest of the country. So that is where I think the inclusive development will happen. And a lot of ease of doing business things have which we were demanding, at least because I'm hearing this task force. So we were demanding and in terms of decriminalization of laws in ensuring that certain old outdated laws are looked at. In fact, certain exemptions also and for that matter, taxation issues, which also they have said that they will look into and a single window system and a tax dispute mechanism. <coughs> Most important thing this is that they are now locking off a virtual you know, what I call appeal at the IT level. So I think this is really ensuring that the compliance burden on industry reduces. And if you ask me, we should not today. Industry doesn't only believe in tax cuts. I honestly believe time has come where we need stability in taxes. But what we need from the government is more of ease of doing business, of ensuring more reforms. And my big problem is that it should not be that the reforms go into the back burner because of the few recent issues. And I definitely believe that, that in, the, in this agriculture laws I would like to bring in, there are certain issues where I don't think the farmers have an issue. At least those should not be kept in a can. They should be brought, brought ahead because just putting money on agri infrastructure is not going to help. We need processing in a big way. We need primary processing in the rural areas. We need export of the crops. We need to make India the food basket of the world. And if any laws are coming in that way, let us all be positive, reform them, so that the agriculturist can get the best value for his crop. And we can make India into a processing sort of hub for the world. Look at the wastage. 
even if we are able to save 50 percent of the wastage i think half our job is done so i do believe that this reforms need need need, need to be with speed and the best thing in the budget which i have liked is that a lot of impetus has been given to foreign investment and the credit rating rating of india in my mind is unfair but i do believe that the foreigners are interested in investing in india and i'm sure they will take all this opportunity to put more money in the country so to that extent this is also part of our recommendation and i i, I really am very happy that this all these things are happening and I'm sure we are looking today not only for budgets, because as you have seen, there have been many budgets before, and I'm sure there'll be some more budget announcements as we go ahead in the year. <laughs> okay. All right. Uh, so I had one issue, which, which, which in my mind, I think with there, there were some issues of the social sector. So if you're going to ask me the question, I will answer. Or can I take you my little bit pick on that? Yes. Uh, yes, please, please. Yes, go ahead. Yes. Go I, ahead, Mr. Kamata. See, I, I believe in the healthcare sector in particular. For example, this vaccine. I believe private sector participation is required from day one. When the main pandemic came, we saw that the, 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 the mortality rate was very high. When the private sector came in, became low. Similarly, in vaccine, right now, the, the, the private sector is no, has not been given. When I say private, let the corporates give the chance to you know, get our frontline workers, our employees, let our NGO, NGOs, let our foundation get the chance. I think in health sector, we need a big partnership between industry, between the private NGOs and the governments. I think government can take off its burden a lot of these things by happening. And I was personally expecting some big announcement in that, in this budget. I don't think that has come about. I do believe that social sector needs this type of support. A little bit I have seen in the education sector mm. and the 100 signing schools where NGOs can participate. It is a very good idea. Yeah. I believe on this models, a lot of primary health centers can also be have, let us say, NGO and private sector participation. Some of the government hospitals can be upgraded. And like they are saying, we will take up banks for, for, for privatization. I believe some of the very good health, board, health, health infrastructure in this country is there. That also needs to be taken up okay. for privatization. Because right. that is the area where, where more money very, is required. Very good point. Right. I think that's an excellent point, actually. Yeah. As you said, the pandemic at the beginning, when they didn't introduce, involve the private sector, the, the situation was much worse. And, and, and including NGOs. I think NGOs in India are just, in, are just wonderful, and they could be leveraged with the private sector in this kind of crisis. You're, very, very good point. Thank you. All also, uh, and also, just as a, Mr. Kambata, I'll, I'll just come back to you in a second. Uh, we've got Vivek Gupta of KPMG waiting, but uh, first let me just go to Nena Lal Kidwai uh, is uh, here with us. Uh, of course, she's uh, formerly head of HSBC Bank in India. She's also been president of FIKI. Thank you, ma'am, for uh, joining us. Uh, great to us always have you. Uh, what, what's your sort of reason take on the budget? Again, coming back to that question, that for an unusual year when you're looking for big change, much is being made of the fact that actually there's not been much change and this budget is a kind of business as usual. But that, that seems to have made <laughs> the good folks at CII very happy. But is that really what we needed at this time? Didn't we want change, disruptive solutions? Well, I'm on the school of thought that uh, what hasn't changed is good, uh, and that is there isn't all this little tweaking of taxes here and there, which just wrecks sentiment and causes more angst than gives result. But I do think that there is change in terms of uh, the big uh, uh, asks out there. Uh, this is the first time we're actually seeing the government come to terms with the fiscal deficit being way higher than what had been committed to, then going with it in terms of accepting that it will be at uh, the 9.5% sort of levels. And the good news is that most of the government borrowing is going to be used towards CapEx. And that CapEx and the structures therein are, I think, very critical. Mm. I was delighted to see the commitment being made to structures like INVITS and REITs uh, these investment vehicles have been used around the world with great success, and we have struggled in India to see the first of them actually floated. And now we have governments saying that they will put their revenue earning assets uh, or some part of it, you know, the invite to be created for NHAI, uh, 7,000 crores, 5,000 crores from power grid. These going into these structures is a start. And what it will help is monetizing of assets which are good 
earning and helps to plow back the money to infrastructure. I believe the commitment this government has made, A, into CapEx and B, into the right structures, financial structures, are very important. So other than the inveet and REIT, I'm sure that uh, uh, you know this has already been mentioned uh, uh, by you, but I would like to reiterate that I think the creation of the ARC asset management company, uh, not strictly a bad bank, that structure again is the right structure to get the NPAs moving. Nana? Because, yeah, sorry. Right, Nana Lal Kidwai, you know, I only have faith in your judgment, so I want to ask you, <laughs> After you've made so much money with the stock market going up to nearly 50,000 as NSEX and, uh, you know, it's booming, uh, I don't own any stocks. Is it going to boom again next year? Should everybody wait and, you know, buy stocks? Should I buy one or two here or there? Uh, actually, I don't like to get into stocks. But is the stock market <laughs> going to go up? That's my bottom line question. I have only faith in your judgment. And everybody does so. Don't so, say it all so, depends. Well, it does all depend, right, Pranoy? And uh, I'm oh, like no. you. I, do, I don't have any investment in stocks, but the, but uh, I do have investments oh, in mutual God. funds. Uh, so, yes, I'm delighted to see the stock market go up for one reason alone, and that is that governments uh, got a big LIC IPO and IPOs as a way to disinvest some of the yeah. assets. And if yeah, we are to close yeah. the gap on the our time. FISC, as you well know, this is the time to do it. Uh, we saw it happen through the Atil Bihari Vajpayee government and Arun Shori, where I do believe it was a, an excellent disinvestment program, excellent. where the monies it that came through very, the stock market uh, was important. Yeah. And we have that opportunity today. Yeah. And it is for government to really avail of this year. quickly. Yeah. 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 Let me bring in Naresh Trehan, uh, Vasu, if I, I just a question for uh, Dr. Trehan. You know, they're saying 60,000 crores, 64,000 crores over six years. That's a, a 10 to 15,000 crores in this year. I just feel, I want to put to you, we're raising 175, a 1,75,000 crores from privatization. At least make that 64,000 for healthcare sector in one year. You're raising 1,75,000 crores. Give six, I mean, the healthcare, this pandemic has shown, it really needs it. 15,000, so you know, too little. There are two aspects to it. One is the allocation of uh, the, uh, the money at different levels has been thought through quite well, actually. Because, you know, if you, unless you strengthen the base of our healthcare structure, it will always be wobbly at the bottom and strong okay, at the top. Okay, sorry, Dr. Trehan, yes. just uh, interrupting you for one second. The first comment by the Prime Minister. The first comment is the first comment by the Prime Minister. The कोरोना ने दुनिया में जो प्रभाव पैदा किया उसने पूरी मानव जाति को हिलाकर रख दिया है इन परिस्थितियों के बीच आज का बजट भारत के आत्मविश्वास को उजागर करने वाला है और साथ ही दुनिया में एक नया आत्मविश्वास भरने वाला है आज के बजट में आत्मनिर्भरता का विजन भी है और हर नागरिक हर वर्ग का समावेश भी है हम इस बजट में जिन सिद्धांतों को लेकर चले हैं वो है ग्रोथ के लिए नए अवसरों नई संभावनाओं का विस्तार करना युवाओं के लिए नए अवसरों का निर्माण करना मानव संसाधन को एक नया आयाम देना इंफ्रास्ट्रक्चर निर्माण के लिए नए नए क्षेत्रों को विकसित करना आधुनिकता की तरफ आगे बढ़ना नए सुधार लाना साथियों नियमों और प्रक्रियाओं का सरल बनाकर आम लोगों के जीवन में ईज ऑफ लिविंग को बढ़ाने पर 
इस बजट में जोर दिया गया है ये बजट इंडिविजुअल्स इन्वेस्टर्स इंडस्ट्री और साथ ही इंफ्रास्ट्रक्चर सेक्टर में बहुत सकारात्मक बदलाव लाएगा मैं इसके लिए देश की वित्त मंत्री निर्मला जी को और उनके साथी मंत्री अनुराग जी और उनकी टीम को बहुत बहुत बधाई देता हूं साथियों ऐसे बजट देखने को कम ही मिलते हैं जिसमें शुरू के एक दो घंटों में ही इतने सकारात्मक रिस्पांस आए कोरोना के चलते कई एक्सपर्ट्स ये मानकर चल रहे थे सरकार आम नागरिकों पर बोझ बढ़ाएगी लेकिन फिजिकल सस्टेनेबिलिटी के प्रति अपने दायित्वों को ध्यान में रखते हुए सरकार ने बजट साइज बढ़ाने पर जोर दिया हमारी सरकार ने निरंतर प्रयास किया है कि बजट ट्रांसपेरेंट होना चाहिए मुझे खुशी है कि आज अनेक विद्वानों ने इस बजट की ट्रांसपेरेंसी की सराहना की है साथियों भारत कोरोना की लड़ाई में रिएक्टिव होने के स्थान पर हमेशा ही प्रोएक्टिव रहा है चाहे वो कोरोना के काल में किए गए रिफॉर्म्स हो या फिर आत्मनिर्भर भारत का संकल्प इसी प्रोएक्टिवनेस को बढ़ाते हुए आज के बजट में भी रिएक्टिव का नामो निशान नहीं है साथ ही हम एक्टिव पर स्टेटस को पर भी अटके नहीं है और हमने इस बजट में भी प्रोएक्टिव बजट दे करके देश के सामने प्रोएक्टिव होने का संदेश दिया है यह बजट उन सेक्टर्स पर विशेष रूप से केंद्रित है जिनसे वेल्थ और वेलनेस दोनों ही तेज गति से बढ़ेंगे जान भी जहान भी इसमें एमएसएमई और इंफ्रास्ट्रक्चर पर विशेष रूप से जोर दिया गया है इसी तरह ये बजट जिस तरह से हेल्थ केयर पर केंद्रित है वो भी अभूतपूर्व है ये बजट देश के हर क्षेत्र में विकास यानी ऑल राउंड डेवलपमेंट की बात करता रहता है खास तौर पर मुझे खुशी है कि इस बजट में दक्षिण के हमारे राज्य पूर्वोत्तर के हमारे राज्य और उत्तर में लेह लद्दाख जैसे क्षेत्रों में विकास पर विशेष ध्यान दिया है ये बजट भारत के कोस्टल स्टेट्स जैसे तमिलनाडु केरल पश्चिम बंगाल इनको एक बिजनेस पावर हाउस बनाने की दिशा में एक बड़ा कदम उठाए नॉर्थ ईस्ट के राज्य जैसे असम के अनएक्सप्लोर्ड पोटेंशियल को टैप करने में बजट बहुत बड़ी मदद करेगा इस बजट में जिस तरह से रिसर्च एंड इनोवेशन इकोसिस्टम पर बल दी गया है जो प्रावधान किए गए हैं उनसे हमारे युवाओं को ताकत मिलेगी भारत उज्जवल भविष्य के लिए बहुत ठोस कदम रखेगा साथियों देश के सामान्य मानवी का महिलाओं का जीवन आसान बनाने के लिए उनके स्वास्थ्य स्वच्छता पोषण शुद्ध जल और अवसरों की समानता इस पर इस बजट में विशेष बल दिया गया है बजट में इंफ्रास्ट्रक्चर पर खर्च में अभूतपूर्व वृद्धि के साथ साथ कई व्यवस्थागत सुधार किए गए हैं जिसका बहुत बड़ा फायदा देश में ग्रोथ और जॉब क्रिएशन रोजगार के लिए बहुत लाभ होगा देश में एग्रीकल्चर सेक्टर को मजबूती देने के लिए किसानों की आय बढ़ाने के लिए इस ब, पर बजट में बहुत जोर दिया गया है कई प्रावधान किए गए हैं एग्रीकल्चर सेक्टर में किसानों को और आसानी से 
और ज्यादा रण मिल सकेगा देश की मंडियों को यानी एपीएमसी को और मजबूत करने के लिए सशक्त करने के लिए एग्रीकल्चर इंफ्रास्ट्रक्चर फंड से मदद का प्रावधान किया गया है ये सब निर्णय ये दिखाते हैं कि इस बजट के दिल में गांव है हमारे किसान है एमएसएमई सेक्टर को गति देने के लिए रोजगार के अवसर बढ़ाने के लिए इस बार एमएसएमई सेक्टर का बजट भी पिछले साल की तुलना में दो गुना से ज्यादा कर दिया गया है साथियों ये बजट आत्मनिर्भरता के उस रास्ते को लेकर आगे बढ़ा है जिसमें देश के हर नागरिक की प्रगति शामिल है ये बजट इस दशक की शुरुआत की एक मजबूत नींव रखने वाला बजट है सभी देशवासियों को आत्मनिर्भर भारत के इस महत्वपूर्ण बजट के लिए मैं बहुत बहुत शुभकामनाएं देता हूं फिर से एक बार वित्त मंत्री जी और उनकी टीम को बहुत बहुत अभिनंदन करता हूं धन्यवाद करता हूं Okay, so that was uh, the Prime Minister there saying that uh, the Finance Minister did an excellent job of the budget. He said that the feedback on the budget has already been great. Uh, he said that many people have appreciated the fact that the budget was extremely transparent about its goals and targets, especially the fiscal deficit, and uh, that this is the. budget for the post pandemic atmanirbhar india all right let me go back to uh, nena lal kidwai and uh, naresh trehan both of us uh, both of them with us uh, sorry uh, naresh trehan uh, you were about to say uh, we're talking i think about whether indeed uh, the kind of response that has come on the budget the prime minister talking about the positive response is that merited especially when it comes to looking at how much was allotted for health so you know if you look at it the banner of 2.83 crore lakh crores as the allocation for health budget is a 130% increase in the previous year's budget so that's a big big commitment which is nice which is required and which has been actually met with this time so the whole scheme that goes through has encompassed many 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 things that were missing so this is a down up budget for healthcare to build okay. the infrastructure at the ground level to increase the ability to uh, to to give critical care at the district level right. and also at the national level also the significant part is that 64000 crores has been committed for the the uh, pm atmanirbhar swasth program yes. now the swasth program is a, is is a is a twin sister of uh, healthcare delivery system right so if you do not have a good civics uh, uh, amenities to support the rural sector you will never be able to get rid of those communicable diseases that are plaguing us as much as non communicable diseases right so i think overall this allocation and the way it has been subdivided you are saying it has come off well quite level. well Okay. Okay. All right. Oh, okay. No, no. Uh, stay on with us if you can. Uh, I just want to go across to uh, Sunil Kant Munjal, uh, who's joining us, uh, of course, of uh, uh, Hero Enterprises. He's also been past president of CII. Uh, great to have you on, Mr. Munjal. Uh, do you believe that the budget was up to the kind of expectations given this highly unusual time, or are there areas where you I, felt that the budget did fall short or was not fully up to scratch i think the budget touched all the pain points that have been expressed by industry and civil society over the last some months mm -hmm. and some over the years so it it is actually was a wonderful balancing act that without raising resource without excessive push on raising resources through taxation she has allowed a slippage on the fist for this year to 9.5% brought it down to 6.8 in the next year with a glide path to 4.5 over the next 3 years i think that's a very sensible approach and this is what industry and cii and others have been recommending for a while now that we need to figure out a way to also spend our way out of this crisis so we need to to take benefit of what has already happened 
we couldn't help the crisis it came mm. but now we need to make the best of it so this coverage across the board on increased spending on infrastructure including a funding arrangement of 5 lakh crores through a dfi allowing non resident indians more flexibility to invest in india making it easier for the elderly to file returns etc looking at ease of use of the revenue department so overall i think it has been a very good uh, well diversified spend including on things like space research healthcare education supporting small industries through 15000 odd crores mm-hmm. uh, allowing scrappage policy for the auto industry i, I i'm quite happy and satisfied with okay. the way the budget has been framed today but but let me ask you this that in concrete terms one of the big yeah. pain points was the fact that demand has shrunk if not collapsed how do you get consumer spending how do you boost demand where in the budget do you see any evidence of that it's a very good question by the way and that's a question we need to keep asking ourselves again and again in india because for a long time now almost 16 or 17 quarters we have been a consumption led uh, economy not an investment led economy because gross capital formation in india has been sliding downwards barring uh, the from the from the government private sector uh, gross capital formation has been very very low so what they've done is on two ends of of industry one those which have the the potential to grow and be globally competitive they have incentivized those two those which have large massive job employment potential they've supported those so consumption automatically gets uh, kicked in when people's incomes improve and there is stability in their feeling that i can keep my job for a while for mm. uh, uh, for the foreseeable future and that has the biggest impact on consumption in increasing periods for uh, for support of um, uh, uh, subsidizing uh, uh, small uh, housing so there's a series of them actually which are in there and i think it's been quite intelligently done focus also on people health nutrition water uh, clean air hmm. uh, clean energy hmm. i think each of these as you implement them and the key here by the way is implementation as you implement them consumption is a natural fallout of these okay 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 so you're saying if not directly there'll be a kind of indirect impact the other question i wanted to ask you was job creation which again you could say is a corollary of all this but again is there anything which in a more direct sense you believe in the budget is moving towards the direction of job creation yeah so the support to the sectors which have massive uh, potential of uh, job creation like textiles and automotive is a direct uh, uh, benefit for job creation mm okay you're saying that is a and, direct benefit and things so, one moment and and things like nursing by the way okay. we don't often realize what a massive multiplier there is in healthcare as an industry right this is this is a big push to that as well right i i asked this uh, mr munjal because we've actually seen a shift in the reverse direction we've seen even pre the pandemic that there has been yeah. a downscaling of jobs especially in the formal economy during the pandemic yeah. we've seen companies either lay off uh, employees or go for pretty substantial pay cuts yeah. so again the worry Absolutely. is how is the how is the no. budget going to turn that shift around you are absolutely right by the way this is one of the outcomes of the pandemic that every entity and this is global it's not only india is trying to become more efficient how can i do more with the same resources how can i use less resources to do the same this has been the big focus therefore new startups additional economic activity new investments are an essential component mm. if we are to create more jobs otherwise we will be in trouble but that's why i said i liked what has been done in the budget hmm. in increasing economic activity because individual companies will all try and lower both cost and increase efficiency a lot of it unfortunately will come with less people working and more automation and more digitization okay okay i'd love to uh, have you on uh, but i believe you have to go thank you very much indeed for being with us let me just uh, take you. that to nenalal kidwai that uh, nenalal kidwai when it comes to increasing consumption increasing demand uh there was an expectation that the government might actually find some way of transferring funds directly to people uh, some kind of cash transfer scheme perhaps expanding over the earlier attempts that they've done with pm kisan and so forth uh, that hasn't been forthcoming despite that you think that this budget could revive demand or is that going to be tricky 
So I'm in the same school of thought as Sunil just uh, set out for us, which is if we can put jobs and money in the hands of people for productive work, then it has the same effect. And this is going. This budget has a huge effect on construction, uh, and the construction sector, as you know, uh, impacts uh, everyone from the migrant labor who we have all had so much angst about, over through uh, you know different sectors which feed the construction sector, mm. and so that's one immediate benefit. Uh, and that spend is actually already evident in terms of the roads programs, etc., that the government has been actually spending on, mm. even over lockdown. I think the second area which I um, work very closely in is everything to do with the Swachh Bharat uh, areas, because whether it is in the areas of uh, provision of uh, treatment plants or sanitation workers, you know that focus and uh, the, the budget sets out over five years, and mm. I'm hoping it will be front ended. Uh, 1.41 lakh crores uh, just there. And then for the Jaljeevan mission, there's another separate allocation, which is 2.86 uh, 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 crores households for tap connections. Mm -hmm. So that, again, has a, a big outlay uh, as well of almost 2.87 uh, 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 lakh crores. So in these huge investments in areas which have a material benefit to individuals in terms of health and infrastructure on the one hand, but on the other, someone has to create that infrastructure. And right. a lot of that infrastructure is through services, people who have to provide the services. So these are excellent ways. I mean, it's mm. almost like a modern Enriga uh, for urban, because a lot of these programs are urban, uh, the, uh, particularly the, the Swachh Bharat treatment uh, uh, of waste uh, facilities, which have been envisaged right. in the budget. And uh, I think these are excellent ways to provide employment and money in the hands of people. I think there's one that has maybe not been mentioned, and it is the stock market. So mm. that uh, you, you, as you know, one of the big investments in our stock markets has happened through SIPs, just small monies coming in month on month mm. into mutual funds. And I would like to believe that there's a lot of small investors in there who will benefit from a market that goes up. So that feel-good feeling also leads to expenditure. Uh, a rising tide raises all boats. Okay.